guy who tends to rise to the occasion. Well, Dave Stewart is one of the premier pitchers in all of baseball, and uh, he does it with basically a fastball, curveball, and a forkball, or some people call it the split finger. He prefers to call it a forkball, so that's what we'll call it. But he has a very good fastball, and he's kind of intimidating out there in that he will come inside, he pitches inside, he pitches outside, he uses the entire plate. And he's got his game face on, as usual. Dave Stewart on the mound. And he has won 20 consecutive games in the month of April. There's his battery mate, a very fine Oakland catcher, Terry Steinbach. The defense behind Dave Stewart, Mark McGuire anchors the infield. He won his first gold glove last year. Mike Gallego, very good defensive second baseman. Walt Wise, good defensive lead short. And Ernest Riles trying to take over and replace Carney Lansford, who's out for the season. And in the outfield, Jose Canseco in right. You've heard about his defense, or lack of. Dave Henderson is in center field, fine defensive center fielder. Willie Wilson, fine outfielder in left. So there's quite a bit of speed in the Oakland outfield. The umpiring alignment, Rick Reed is back of the plate. Joe Brinkman, the crew chief at first base. Daryl Cousins at second. And Rocky Rowe is at third. And this is, as you see, quite a veteran crew. Another excellent crowd gathering at the Coliseum. They'll have an excess of 30,000 for this one. They had 36,000 here Friday, 38,000 yesterday at the Oakland Coliseum, which has become one of the best attended ballparks in the major leagues the last couple of years. Here is Harold Reynolds, and as you can see, Reynolds is struggling, but just about everybody with the Mariners is struggling with the bat right now. But this is not a great night for Reynolds to look forward to breaking out of his slump. He has never hit Dave Stewart. There's ball one. Four for 46. That's how many hits and at-bats Reynolds has had against Stewart. That one caught the corner. One ball, one strike. Riley and Martinez to follow. Sometimes when you have a lot of trouble against the pitcher, it's because you do not pick the ball up well out of his hand right away. You can see Dave Stewart kind of closes his shoulder and then jumps at you. Sometimes that's tough for players to pick up the, the pitch when he does that. He's not real smooth. It's a ball and two strikes to the switch hitting Reynolds. And that's a foul just off to the right. So the count, one ball, two strikes. Reynolds is the igniter of the Mariners, and uh, at 158 average, one of the reasons that the Mariners have gotten off to a slow start. He has not been getting things started for them yet. And it's a ball, two and two. Jim Lefevre, and there are those who say that the Mariners manager is going to have to get this thing turned around soon. That the uh, the Mariners, big things expected of the Mariners this year. That one is a foul out of play off the third base side. Well, they were expected to contend, and they probably will before the season's over, but they are off to a very slow start, 0 and 5. That doesn't bode well if you are the manager, especially on a team where you are on the hot seat. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's down the left field line, but foul. And in amongst the spectators, well, the Mariners broke camp filled with high hopes. And... Uh, they have not even been able to see with a good pair of binoculars first place in their history. They haven't even been able to see 500, but they've got so much young pitching talent. More than 500 expected. There's a called strike three to Harold Reynolds. Well, now he's four for 47. <laughs> Dave Stewart set him up by throwing him three fastballs on the outside corner. He fouled him off, and then he came inside with a slider. Strike three call. Here is Greg Briley at the plate, and he takes a strike. It's 0-1. Briley, left-handed hitter, built very uh, similarly to a, a fellow sitting very close to me, Joe Morgan. They compared him to Joe when he first came up. But so far, he's not been able to live up to that. He just looks a little bit like you, Joe. He doesn't hit like you, not yet anyway. One ball, one strike to Briley. One out, nobody on. It's a little bit of history that seems to be on Stewart's side. That is a ball, a little bit low. Ball two, two and one. Stewart not only has won 20 consecutive April decisions, but he has also won 14 consecutive games against the Mariners. That's foul and out of play. Not only 14 in a row, but in his last 14 starts against the Mariners, he's won every one of them. 
I think that's awfully tough pitching against one team. Dave Stewart, as I mentioned, is not a smooth pitcher. Right there, he tucks himself, closes, and then he kind of jumps at you. And that makes it tough to pick up the ball sometimes. Three and two now to Riley. On deck, Edgar Martinez. Well, the sun has broken through. It's been overcast almost all day out here. That is down the left field line foul. They're not catching up to that fastball. One of the things that makes Dave Stewart so tough is you cannot just go out there expecting him to throw you a fastball. He mixes in this fork ball, which looks like a fastball when he releases it. So you have to wait a little bit longer. And when you do that, the fastball is on top of you. And so far, we're getting a reading of 94 miles an hour on that fastball. That one's too high, and Briley lays off for ball four. So with one out, the Mariners have a base runner, and here is Edgar Martinez. Uh, the Mariners do have some very fine young talent. I think first when you think of them, you think of Ken Griffey Jr., then you think of these uh, fine young pitchers. Tonight, starter Hanson, also Randy Johnson, who pitched a no-hitter last year, uh, last year, Brian Holman. But then there's this fellow that you might tend to overlook, Edgar Martinez. He hit 300 last year. Shows pretty good eye at the plate, too. And yesterday, he hit a home run. I think he has been overshadowed a little bit with all the hullabaloo about Ken Griffey Jr. But he's a very fine player. He's hit over 300 in the minor leagues every place he played. So he's been a consistent hitter. And he, he actually led the Mariners in hitting last year. He hit 302 and Griffey Jr. 300 even. And that is ball one to Edgar Martinez. Edgar Martinez. Last year, he not only batted 300, but he had an excellent on-base average, hit 11 home runs. 1-0 on the count, and now ball two, and Stewart on the verge of getting into some trouble here with Griffey on deck. You know, take some third baseman in the American League, like Wade Boggs, Kelly Gruber, Gary Gaetti, Kevin Seitzer, guys that you've heard of. And you put Martinez in with them, and in that group, he finished second in batting average third in slugging percentage first in on base average so some of the top third basemen he stacks up well in some important categories again I think he's underrated simply because of Ken Griffey Jr. Tony La Russa and he managed to get all of this done again so right now there's a few things working against the athletics in their bid to make it four straight American League pennants we'll talk about that a little bit as we go along and there is ball four, back-to-back -back walks. Riley will move to second. Martinez will take first. And now here's one guy who not only is a great young talent, but who is not slumping for the Mariners right now. Ken Griffey Jr. coming up. The Mariners, as a team, have been struggling since opening day, but Ken Griffey Jr. is hitting 333, so he's been swinging the bat well. Plus, he hits very well against Dave Stewart. Two men on, nobody out. Alvin Davis on deck. Mariners have six left-handed hitters in the order against Stewart tonight. That's a strike. Pretty pitch on the outside. 1-1. This is what you were talking about, Joe. Hits him awfully well. And I think Junior, as, as we all call him, when he walks to the plate, he really doesn't care whether Dave Stewart's pitching, Dave Johnson, or John Doe. He just goes up to look for the ball and drive it. And I think that's what's great about young kids. They can just keep that in mind. As you get older and become a veteran, you start thinking a little bit too much, I believe. I think John Doe's the only guy he doesn't hit well. <laughs> Up the middle, base hit into center field. Here comes Briley for the plate, and he'll score without a throw from Dave Henderson. And the Mariners are out in front, 1-0. And Stewart's wildness, and then Griffey Jr. Pulling them up uh, in the lead here. He hurt his hand. It seemed like he hit it solidly up the middle, but he's grasping his right left thumb. It was a high fastball, and he lined it right back through the middle. One of the reasons he hit Stewart's well is because he can't hit the high fastball, and the high fastball is one of Stewart's best pitches. Good, compact swing. Gets on top of the high fastball. Well, trainer Rick Griffin has attended to Griffey. Looks like he's still in some pain over there. Martinez stopping at second. Griffey at first. Here's Alvin Davis. And for a long while, he has, in the relative obscurity of the Pacific Northwest, 
not been a national figure, but he has been the Mariners' best hitter year in and year out for a while. And here they have a great opportunity to jump on Stewart right now. That is a base hit down the right field line. May have broken his bat on it. That will get Breitler, rather Martinez, home, and Griffey goes to third. Mariners out in front, 2 nothing. Each one of those walks has become a run. Two runs and counting. Stewart tried to get inside on Davis with a fastball, and that's the book on Davis, try to stay tight on him. This pitch comes inside, it jams Davis, but he bloops it over first base for a base hit and an RBI. Davis doesn't catch up with the fastball inside, but he gets a base hit, gets a piece of it, and drives it over the infield. Now the veteran Pete O'Brien. Last year, O'Brien described his season with the Mariners, his first season as a high-priced free agent acquisition, as baseball hell. <laughs> he got injured, missed a long time, and even when he wasn't injured, he wasn't hitting. Well, he hit 211. That's out of play. That One could, strike. That could make you unhappy. Made him unhappy, made Mariners fans unhappy. You see, they, that's what they were hoping, that figure on top, 19 homers and 80 RBIs he'd averaged. But the last three years, his figures have been going down, but never as low as last year. It's a ball and a strike. Now, O'Brien's trying to deliver a run. There's Griffey over at third base, and Alvin Davis with Mark McGuire on the bag at first. Davis is not a threat to try and steal. That hole on the right side, wide open with McGuire on the bag. Stewart trying to stay away from O'Brien. Two and one. Now last year, first inning was one of Stewart's worst innings. His ERA in the first innings last year, 3.5. So if you were going to get to him, that is the time. Now is the time for the Mariners. And it is ball three, three and one. When you see Dave Stewart go almost exclusively with the fastball, that means he is having problems because he doesn't feel real comfortable on the mound because he mixes his pitches very well normally. But we've seen basically one fastball pitch after another. Three and one. That could be two. Gallego to Weiss one. To first two. A double play. A little further addition of baseball hell for Pete O'Brien. But the Mariners get two. The Athletics coming up. Here now. Here's the starting lineup for the three-time defending American League champion Oakland Athletics. Without Ricky Henderson, Walt Weiss leads off at shortstop. Then Dave Henderson is in center field. Jose Canseco in right field. The veteran Harold Baines bets clean up the DH. Terry Steinbach off to a fast start as the catcher. The big home run slugger Mark McGuire is at first base batting sixth. Veteran former Royal Willie Wilson in left field replacing Henderson. Ernest Riles is at third base and at second base batting ninth, Mike Gallego. And that lineup will be facing the tall, hard throwing right hander, Eric Hansen. He lost the other night in the home opener in Seattle, but they don't figure him to lose often, Joe. Well, he's a very fine pitcher, as Dave Stewart said in the open. He is one of the best young pitchers in the American League. He won 18 ball games and he's pitched especially well against the Oakland A's. I was talking to the pitching coach before the ball game, and he said basically Mike Paul, who is the pitching coach, said he would basically use fastball, curveball, and a change. And they're all three outstanding pitches for the young guy. And the catcher just making the throw down to second base, a veteran with the Mariners, Dave Valley. For Oakland, Walt Weiss will lead it off, then Dave Henderson and Jose Canseco. And again, Dave Ricky Bobby. Henderson, as we mentioned at the outset of the telecast, injured on Thursday. They were hoping he might be able to get into one or two games this weekend, but the muscle strain and the calf, now they're talking about he might be as, maybe as many as 10 days away from the lineup. And that has been a problem because they're going with 12 pitchers to start the year, meaning only four reserve players on the bench, non-pitchers, with Ricky unavailable, that leaves them with only three, kind of thin. They are helped out a lot with this league having a designated hitter, so they do not have to pinch hit as often and use up those bench players so they can keep them in case they do go into an extra inning ball game. That's right. Dude. You could not do this in the National League. No. And not many try to do it in the American League. Two and all the count. Now, th this is an important inning for Hanson. He's got the lead. He's got the advantage over Stewart. Well, it's very important, especially 
since they hooked up in the nothing to nothing ball game last year for about 11 innings. So now they've staked him to a lead. It's important for him to shut the A's down right away. 3 and 0 the count to Weiss. That's on the inside corner. 3 and 1. Weiss has been doing the leadoff chores without Ricky Henderson in there. 3 and 1 the count. Pete O'Brien will take that one. Well, that's one reason they mix Ricky Henderson already. If you get a three and one count and you're down by two runs and you're the leadoff hitter, you should not be swinging at a three and one pitch when the guy had thrown you three straight balls to start off the ball game. That should have been taken. That pitch should have been taken, and I think it was ball four. Now here is Dave Henderson. He looks up and down this Oakland lineup, and there's only one hitter who's ever had any kind of success against Hanson and that is Harold Baines ball one to Dave Henderson he's off to a very fine start Hendu seems to always hit well in this ballpark Did a crusher of a home run in Oakland's home opener last Tuesday a three run shot against Jack Morris he hit it right over that side <laughs> Hendu's bad boy club what does that mean are they saying he's a bad boy? Hanson might think so. Into the alleyway. Cut off in left field by Briley. Henderson's going to try it. Going to be close. Three for double for Dave Henderson. And Reynolds is very upset. And Reynolds thought they had it. Well, umpire Rick Reed was right on top of the play. Here's Reynolds taking the throw and making the tag. Ooh. I see why he was arguing. <laughs> it looked like he got his glove right in between Dave Henderson's foot and the bag. We'll get a better look at it from this angle. Well, not a better look, but. Here's Canseco. Well, let's try this one. Maybe this is a better look. Yeah, right between his foot and the bag. Maybe Reynolds should have kept the glove there and really pushed his foot down. I think that would have given the umpire no alternative but to call him out. I'm wondering if in that play as the foot hit his glove, he started thinking, I might not have a hand here in another couple of <laughs> seconds if I leave there too long. Second baseman do not think like that. Jim. Well, here's Canseco. Oh! Change up a beauty in for a strike. Hansen is in on the count 0 and 2. Canseco has never had a hit against Eric Hansen. Now last year Hansen and Stewart matched up here and they went 10 innings and neither one had allowed a run. Hansen in fact had given Oakland just two hits in 10 innings. Stewart went through the 11th inning with a shutout and then against the bullpen Oakland scored in the bottom of the 11th and they won the game one nothing. Great great classic matchup. But now here's Hans got two runs with which to work already. The Canseco, well capable of equalizing here. He hit his first home run of the year yesterday against Seattle. He struck him out. The reason the Cincinnati Reds did so well against Canseco and the rest of the A's last year is they had the good high fastballs. They could pitch him inside with a high fastball and go away. And Hansen set him up with this change up the pitch before now he comes back with the good high fastball not many sluggers can handle that pitch. Now here is Harold Baines two down Dave Henderson at second. Strike swinging on one the off speed delivery. Now Baines hitting only 211 but he's made the hits count. He leads the athletics in the first week with five runs battered in. And uh, as we said, he is the only hitter who's had success in the past against Hanson. Uh, six hits and 17 at bats. He hasn't murdered him, but he's had at least some success. A ball and a strike to Baines. Harold Baines is a very good hitter. He doesn't try to pull the ball, so this changeup shouldn't bother him as much. And he will go the other way with the fastball. There's a changeup on the outside corner, strike two. That is a great pitch. The ball actually moves away from the left-handed hitter there. That makes it even more effective. The speed confuses the hitter, but the movement away also hurts the hitter. 
Here's Hanson's one two pitch to Baines. The curveball of beauty struck him out. And that's why Carney Lansford compared his curveball to Bly Levin. <laughs> it's a great one. He maintains the lead for the Mariners after one. The draft coverage on ESPN is scheduled interviews that day. Dan McGuire, the brother of Mark McGuire of the Athletics, former San Diego State quarterback, and Todd Marinovich, the ex USC Trojan quarterback. Here is Jay Buhner. Very powerful right handed swinger, but has never been able to stay healthy. He's hitting seventh in the order. Takes ball one from Dave Stewart. Stu very rocky in the first inning. Fastball moves him back. Ball two. Dave Valley and Omar Vizquel will follow. Dave Stewart is like a lot of real good pitchers in that sometimes they start off slowly, but they gather their rhythm and they get better rhythm as the game goes along and their game picks up. Into the shadows now. You see that pitch coming out of the sunlight into the shadows. Two and one the count. Stewart threw 27 pitches in that first inning. Usually an economy of pitches is one of his trademarks. Oh Going right by him. Just by comparison, Hansen, who had two strikeouts, that takes a few pitches. Nonetheless, only through 15. Two and two to Jay Buhner. Oh, a close one. Missed inside. Fastball, three and two. Three two pitch. Up the middle. And in there, base hit. Third hit for the Mariners. We're talking about Hansen's curveball, Joe. A lot of people say that a curveball is an optical illusion. We'll let you gauge for yourself here. Right. Hansen throws the ball, it starts right here. By the time it gets to home plate, it's down by the ankles. That is not an optical illusion. That's a big breaking curveball, and Harold Baines couldn't hit it. This is Dave Valley, the right handed batting catcher for the Mariners. Runner at first, nobody out. Mariners ahead, 2 0. Ball one. Now, Joe, when a guy throws a curveball that tightly spun with that much break to it, I mean, is it hittable? Well, the only way you can hit it is just react to the ball. Most hitters can see the spin on a curveball about. 15 feet out in front of the plate and you adjust to it. But when it's tight like that, you can't see the spin. You just have to react to where the ball goes. You just have to really follow it well with your eyes. There's a hole in most curveballs. Because the ball is spinning one way, you can see a little hole in it. Fly ball. Could be trouble if it's fair. Can't Seiko can't get there. It is a fair ball. And all the way to third goes Dave, or rather Jay Buhner, and Valley holds it first with a single. They were playing him to pull, and it cost him. What? If you get a reputation as in whether it's good or bad, it usually stays with you. The fans are booing a little bit about Canseco, but there was no chance for him to make this play. The ball just dumped down the right field line. No chance. Now here is Omar Vizquel, the ninth place hitter for the Mariners. Runners at first and third, nobody out. Vizquel. 250 so far this year. No RBIs. Ball one, and Stewart continues to start out behind these hitters. Stewart, 20 consecutive victories in the month of April, 14 consecutive victories against the Mariners. That is foul off to the left, and the count is. Uh, ball and a strike. Dave Stewart has not used his defense much tonight, but behind him at first base was Mark McGuire. And there you see how they're playing the scale. They're playing him around to the left side. McGuire is holding the runner at first base. Ball and a strike to count. And now two and one. Stewart has all this dominance against the Mariners and in the month of April the Mariners have lost five in a row anyway they're not hitting the ball in a way it seems like the odds for some quirky reason are against Stewart here I agree with you the Mariners have to win a game soon and he has to lose one I mean that's the way baseball averages go foul back two and two Earl Weaver great manager in Baltimore for so many years he hated a night like this or a series like this he said your club is hot 
your pitch is hot. And their club hasn't done anything. I wish they'd won one or two before they got here. Right. They're due. You never want to play a team that's on a losing streak because they're due to break it any time. Two and two, the count, and the fourth ball is in the dirt. The runners will hold. Nice play by Steinbach. The danger of throwing the fork ball with a runner on third base is the wild pitch or the pass ball. But Steinbach got down in front of it, kept the ball in front of him, no advance by either runner. This is the Dave Stewart fork ball. You see it bounces in front of the plate, but Steinbach got his body over in front of it and kept it from going to the screen. Three two count, and it's another walk. Well, Stewart is just clearly not right tonight. That's his third walk, and he walks Viscal. The last man in this lineup, or really almost the last man in anybody's lineup, you'd want to walk. La Russa will go out and visit with Dave Stewart now. Base is loaded and nobody out, and the top of the order coming up. If you're Tony La Russa, really, you're just going out to settle Dave down, to calm him down. You're not going out to say, hey, if you don't get this next guy, I'm going to take you out. He's just going out to say, you sure you're all right? And Dave says, yes. But he really just wants him to step back, start his patterns all over again and you know go back to the fundamentals fundamentals being throw strikes that's the first thing you have to think about and Joe we could be entering what could be a key point of this ball game now we won't know until later but what I'm saying is the Mariners have a chance here to bust it open early bases loaded nobody out they already lead to nothing if they do they could well go on and win this game but if they don't get anything out of this the whole game turns around once again, an Oakland is right in it. So exactly. Key moments here. Well, especially you have to get put Dave Stewart away when you have the opportunity. Double play depth at short and second in at third and first, and there is ball one. Reynolds struck out looking his first time. There's Buner. He's single. He's at third base. Valley, who's single, is at second base. Miskel, who walked, is at first base. Looks like a ground ball to third or first. They'll go home with it, or they could. And it is 2 and 0. Oh. Now Stewart asking for a caller. He wanted that pitch. Terry Steinbach thought he got the outside corner with that pitch also. 42 pitches thrown already by Stu. 3 and 0. Oh. Now this is a guy, Harold Reynolds, who is 4 for 47 lifetime against Stewart. And he struck out in the first inning. And Stewart can't find the strike zone three and oh no way Reynolds is swinging at that pitch three and oh now the three one that is a fair ball this might score the ball two runs are in and being held at third is Viscal on the double by Reynolds. Two run score, and it is 4 0 Seattle. The one thing you do not do is play Harold Reynolds to pull. It's not like him to pull the ball right down the, the first baseline. But this ball goes over the first base bag and then goes into foul territory and it clears the bases. It's a fastball on the inside corner, down a little bit, and he gets over the top of it. And it's inside the bag foul, rolls down into the corner. By the time Canseco gets it back in, two runs have scored and runners at second and third. Now the Athletics will bring the infield in for Greg Briley. He walked his first time. Two runs in, two more in scoring position, nobody out. Ball one. And Oakland has a stirring in its bullpen along the left field line. Here's Briley in the shadows looking out into the bright sun. strike well, Reynolds gets the big hit the first time the Mariners have had a hit with the bases loaded this year they have really had a trademark of not getting any kind of hits with anybody in scoring position whether the bases are loaded or not up till now they really struggled that's a call strike two one and two the count 300 hitter Edgar Martinez on deck Griffey after him there's Reggie Harris right-hander warming up in the Oakland bullpen. The one-two pitch is a drive deep into center field. Dave Henderson shading the eyes makes the catch. Tagging and scoring is Viscal and Reynolds holds it second. And Greg Briley 
gets the job done. He gets that runner home five to nothing Seattle. Dave Stewart has pitched two innings and I guarantee you out of all the pitches he has thrown he has not thrown over four fork balls. He has become a one pitch pitcher and I think that's one of the reasons that he's having problems with the Mariners. They're pretty good fastball hitters and he has not been able to mix his pitches because of his control. Edgar or lack of. Yeah lack of that's for sure. Edgar Martinez runner at second one out. Ball one he's starting everybody behind every hitter in this inning. That puts you in a position where you have to come with the fastball. And if you only throw fastball to major league hitters they will catch up with you. Two, two and oh. Well, Stewart has faced 11 hitters. He's given up five hits and three walks. He's actually only retired three of the 11. One of those hit into a double play in the first. Two and oh, the count. That's foul and out of play on the first base side. Two and one now. Well, Seattle's doing everything that they didn't do. The, the first two opportunities with man in scoring position. Griffey and Davis each drove in a run. And then in this inning with the bases loaded Reynolds drives in two and then with a man at third Riley gets him home. Mariners just might win it this year <laughs> the way they look tonight. Two and one the count. Just off the outside three and one. Griffey is on deck. Five runs already allowed by Stewart. Unusual numbers for Dave Stewart. And it's another walk. The fourth walk allowed by Stewart. First and second. One away, and here's Ken Griffey Jr., who delivered the first Mariner run back in the first with a single center. A lot of people are probably wondering why Tony LaRusso is staying with Dave Stewart so long. You stay with your veteran pitchers and you stay with your ace a little longer than you would say a rookie or someone else in this situation. You keep thinking he will get out of it. He will find his rhythm and he'll shut him out for the rest of the game. And we can score some runs. That's what Tony's thinking right now. There's his strike. Borderline call and uh, Griffey wasn't so sure. He said are you sure that was a strike. <laughs> because he was unhappy with the first strike was called in his initial time at bat here. Thought it was high as well. Two on, one out. That is just foul outside of first. Two strikes to count. Well, as you see, Griffey, he was the Mariners' big gun last year for homers and RBIs, hits, slugging percentage. And uh, he was only 20 years of age when he did all of that. <laughs> yeah. Broke his bat in that last foul ball. You know, Joe, it's got to have been at least six years since Dave Stewart in the month of April has given up this much this early in a game. Well, when you win 20 consecutive games in April, you're not apt to give up a lot of runs. Oh, and two the count. Griffey with his new bat. Two men on. Stewart now just trying to do some damage control here. Five runs have already scored. That's foul and out of play. Now, you know, I was talking to Harold Reynolds before the game. Been with the Mariners for a long time. And I asked him if they were pressing right now because of the bad start. So much is expected of them this year. And he says, no, not this year. He says, in the past, we would have panicked. And we would have pressed. This is not now. We're more mature now. To ball inside one and two the count and it's one thing you know a guy can say that but it will be borne out over the next few days the next few weeks if indeed that is the case but so far tonight they're giving evidence that indeed they haven't panicked. Well they started their season against the California Angels ran into a hot Dave Winfield and Dave Parker some good pitching by California. And they got off to a slow start and you lose the first three ball games at home and really puts you behind the eight ball. And then on top of that you have to come and face the American League champions in their home park. It becomes a very tough task for you to get yourself going. That's a little tap on the players at first. And they get Ken Griffey Jr. with Reynolds taking third and Martinez taking second. 
that's the Dave Stewart that we've come to know. He threw a lot of high fastballs All away, right, but he also hitter. mixed in the fork ball. All and he got the Davis. last out with the fork ball going down and out of the strike zone. If you're behind in the count, you can't expect to get hitters out chasing pitches out of the strike zone. If you get ahead in the count, they will chase a lot of pitches out of the strike zone. Alvin Davis. Alvin. Every year you can figure him for about 290 and 90 walks to get his home runs, particularly at the Kingdom. Strike one. Well, Stewart has begun to show signs of turning it around, first against Griffey, and now he starts Davis with a strike. Five to nothing, Mariners. I think Dave Stewart is saying to himself, how did I get in this position? Definitely do not want to give up five runs to the Mariners with Eric Hansen on the mound. Or even two runs. Right. A ball and a strike. Brian would be next. Davis is the eighth man to bat in the inning. And he is batting with two men in scoring position. But also two down. Ball and a strike. It comes two and one. A little maneuverability here with first base open. Well, he's probably thinking two things here. I don't want to give in to Alvin Davis and let him hurt me, but by the same token, I don't want to pitch with the bases loaded again either because I have not had the control that I want. And if I fall behind O'Brien, he can hurt me. That one hit deeper than Wilson originally thought, but he was able to run it down. He started to break in on that ball, but Davis hit it at the center of percussion, even with that odd swing. Willie Wilson shows why he's been a gold glover out there in the past. Five nothing Seattle. The Mariners with five runs in the first two innings against Dave Stewart. Back of their ace. The big right hander Eric Hansen who will face this man Terry Steinbach to lead things off in the Oakland second. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan. Your Sunday night telecasters. Next Sunday will be in Montreal. Watch the Mets and the Expos. There's ball one to Steinbach. McGuire and Wilson will follow. The new hitting instructor of the Athletics is Steinbach takes ball two. Rick Burleson, the rooster. Former excellent shortstop of the Red Sox. He was there in 75 against your Reds, Joe, in that great World Series. I think that's a unique choice for a hitting instructor for this type of ball club. Up the middle is through. Base hit for Steinbach. Burleson thinks Steinbach is ready to have a big year with the bat. He likes him a lot. Well, the A's have been waiting for him to have the big year. He was expected to do great when he first came up. And in fact, he did very well his first year, and he's kind of gone on the downside ever since that time. It's a fastball on the outside corner, and he hits it right back up the middle. This Gale cannot get to it. That brings up McGuire. And ball one, the changeup missing. You see McGuire, you immediately think home run. He's the only man in Major League history to hit 30 or more in each of his first four years in the big leagues. Has not hit one yet this year. And has hardly hit much of anything so far this year. Burleson says he is really scuffling right now. Ball on a strike to him. Look at that. Very impressive figures. Most of me hits away from here. This is not a good ballpark for him. Strike two call. He has never had a hit against Eric Hansen. Well, Eric Hansen has a good enough fastball that if he gets it above the waist, McGuire will have a lot of problems with it. But he also has the great changeup, which goes out of the strike zone, and McGuire will chase it a lot of times. So he matches up very well against McGuire. That's a foul off the right field line. Now, Hansen, it looked like he was shaking off Valley. He did come in with a fastball. I think Valley wanted the curve there. I think he wanted him to miss with the curve, throw it in the strike zone, let it break down and away. But Hanson wanted to come back with a fastball. He got away with a mistake. He got it in the middle of the plate, but then not high enough. There's the curve. That was a close one. Well, see, that's Good the pitch that Valley wanted him to throw the pitch before. So Hanson, what, just figured uh, he has great confidence in getting the fastball by McGuire? He's going to go away with a fastball. 
And hopefully he's going to get it up. Well, he got it up, but not away, but it's just a high, lazy fly. And Griffey looking up into the bright blue California sky makes the grab. One away. Steinbach back to first. Here's the infield for the Seattle Mariners. Harold Reynolds, gold glove winner at second. Pete O'Brien, good glove man at first. Vizquel is the shortstop, and Martinez over at third. Ken Griffey Jr., also a gold glove winner in center field. Jay Bruner in right. Greg Briley is in left tonight. Here is Willie Wilson. Long time with the Kansas City Royals. That's a strike. Decided to break up that ball club and replace some parts that have been there a long time. Frank White no longer there. Now Wilson is gone. Brett is still there. And Wilson likes it out here. He says it's always cool out here. It keeps you strong. A ball and a strike to count. Well, I think he's a very good addition for the Oakland A's because he can still run very well. He plays defense well, and he's a switch hitter, so I think he will have a good season. He will get a lot of at-bats here. He had a good year last year. Fouled straight back with the Kansas City Royals. He hit uh, 290. Gives him a little deep depth. Ernest Riles is on deck. Five to nothing Mariners. When the A's talk about having a better team this year than last year, they're talking about guys like Willie Wilson being here. He struck him out. Not, not three yet, Dave. <laughs> That's three strikes, but just two outs. Yeah, Valley's wanting to rush to the dugout. We mentioned the good curveball from Eric Hansen. There's another look at it. No one has fouled it or even touched it yet. You can see Wilson just tied up completely inside. He was completely fooled by that pitch. Here's Ernest Riles. He was with the Giants across the bay from here last year and was quite a pinch hitter. And they're using his abilities right now and they didn't figure that they would have to because Lansford is out for the year with an injury, probably for the year. And Riles is platooning at third with Vance Law in Carney's absence. 2 0. He's a pretty good player. He can swing the bat. He runs pretty well and he plays good defense. Excellent low fastball hitter. He got one of those from Doc Gooden last August in a Sunday night game. He had a grand slam against him over at Candlestick. One of the wildest games we had last season. In fact, he hit it as a pinch hitter against uh, Gooden. Mets won today, by the way, over Montreal, 7 1. They're off to a very good start without Strawberry. The hands foul third base side. Martinez will not have a play. The count is two and two. We'll see those Mets without hey, Strawberry next Sunday in Montreal. They're running a lot. See in a three-game series with Philadelphia, they stole ten times this week. Did you ever look at the Mets and think about Davy Johnson when he was there? Davy used to hit the ball out of the ballpark, so he had a team that was really built like that. Bud Harrelson used to bunt, hit and run, and steal bases. That curveball is in there. Strike three call. And Hanson has four strikeouts already. Not looking good for the Athletics early. Seattle five. Oakland nothing. Oakland Bay Bridge. And uh, the island off in the distance, Yerba Buena Island. Bridge goes right through that island. Ball one to Pete O'Brien from Dave Stewart. And there's a called strike. O'Brien hit into an inning ending double play in the first five to nothing Mariners over the athletics. We are in the uh, San Francisco Oakland Bay Area Our first Sunday night game of the year every Sunday eight o'clock Eastern. You'll find us right here on ESPN We're going to nearly all of the ballparks again this year. All three outside three and one next week Montreal. Hit just about all of them by the time we're finished in late September. 3 1 pitch on the way. That's a foul on the left field line. Eric Hansen is throwing an 84 mile an hour fastball. This is a 68 mile an hour curveball. That big difference is what really fools Riles there, and he takes strike three. And meanwhile, here, Pete O'Brien swings for strike three. Second strikeout for Stewart. Well, one thing, Joe, you're talking about 
trying to hit that great curveball. I mean, there aren't that many great curveballs. No, around. not anymore. They go to the slider now. But the thing that I think that makes his great is that he throws an 84 mile an hour fastball. It comes back with a 68 mile an hour curveball. That's a 16 mile an hour difference. And the change of speed makes a big difference to the hitter. I'm having a hard time understanding this 84 mile an hour fastball. I am too, but he throws 92, 93. <laughs> well, it looks like he's throwing well, but the gun says 84. I think the gun is my, probably means the year. <laughs> Back in 1984, guys threw like this. One thing I've noticed about Dave Stewart today, John, he's really working off the extreme right corner of the mound toward the third baseline. Most of his fastballs to the left-handed hitters have been tailing away outside. And I think that's really caused him a problem tonight because normally Dave Stewart has excellent control, but his ball seems to be moving away from the left-handed hitter more than normal tonight. Two and one the count to Buhner. Two and two. Well, he could put Jim Palmer's fabled variable chance deviation theory into effect. Okay. Which was... If you're not able to get the ball where you want it on the corner, just try and throw it down the middle. And the deviation theory would be that the chances are It'll you won't get it there either, and you'll get it on the <laughs> corner, yeah. Well, that was my theory of pitching anyway. Throw it down the middle, the low ball hitters will swing under it, and the high ball hitters will swing over it. So 2-2 two -two pitch to Buhner. The fork ball is low, 3-2. They're laying off that pitch tonight. When you are having problems with your control, it's up to your catcher to change his target area. Three two pitches fouled back. Palmer says that he got the variable chance deviation theory of pitching from Dave Johnson, whom we just mentioned. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> right. If you don't have control enough to throw it where you want, aim it someplace else and it'll go there, huh? Three two pitch. Back in. You know, if you're aiming for the outside corner and it ends up a foot outside, well, aim for down the middle and maybe you'll hit the corner. The That's the way your ball is moving. When you look back at the first two innings, Dave Stewart missed a lot toward the outside part of the play. 3 2 pitch. That's a foul. Well, they, Stewart is really throwing a lot of pitches in this game. He is. He is right now up around where you would expect him to be maybe after six or seven innings. And this is only the third with one out. He's thrown 75 pitches already. Three and two, the count of Buhner. That is foul and out of play. Cannot put him away here. Three and two. Look at the Oakland bullpen, and there's some familiar faces missing out there, such as Rick Honeycutt and such as Gene Nelson. These are not looking quite as deep as they normally would be, particularly in that bullpen. Honeycutt had surgery. He's on the shelf for a while. And Nelson the other night, the Minnesota in here, was sitting in the dugout. And Mike Pagliarulo, the twins, had a line drive right into the dugout. Nelson stuck his hand up in front of his face, trying to save his life, but he suffered a broken finger. Strike three call on the outside. Long battle from Buhner, but Stewart prevails. Dave Stewart seems to be getting better as the, this inning progresses. That's a perfect pitch on the outside corner. And he set that up by throwing three fastballs on the inside corner. And when you do that and go away, hitters aren't going to touch you. Now here is Dave Valley, the eighth place hitter. He got a bloop single along the right field line in that three-run second inning, and he takes a strike. And that's the first hitter he has started off with a slider. First hitter. It's a ball. One ball, one strike. Oakland, after this game, will head out on a long road trip. They have kind of an unusual schedule to start the year. Just missed with that one. Two and one. Oakland plays its first 16 games this year in 16 days. When's the last time I remember a team not having a single day off? Especially at the beginning yeah, of the season. That's what I mean. To start the year. Usually you got all kinds of days off then. 
fouled back. That is why they're going with 12 pitchers right now. They have two rookies in the starting rotation because they have injury problems there as well. But they go out on a 10 day three city road trip after this game starting in Anaheim against the Red Hot Angels. That should be a, a great confrontation particularly for early in the year. Two and two to Valley. The fork ball is low three and two. That will be a great series John even though it is early in the year the Angels want to prove to the A's that they're going to be a team that they'll have to contend with down the stretch. So they will be playing this series like it's the last series of the season I guarantee you. Three two pitch strike three call and Stewart strikes out the side. Well big Stu is back. The A's have a lot of catching up to do. Right here on ESPN Tuesday. You might be a little late for that fellow. <laughs> He's enjoying Sunday night baseball out here in Oakland. With A. Stewart had a little better rhythm in the third inning. He was hitting the corners whereas before he was missing outside. Ball's right on the corner. He's moving the ball inside and outside now whereas before he was just trying to throw strikes. Here's Mike Gallego the ninth place hitter for the athletics to lead it off. Gallego very handy man in this ball club. He can play second base but he also can play shortstop. Great ability. Hanson delivers into right center field. That's a base hit. Gallego starting off the year with a hot bat. Third hit for Oakland. His sixth hit of the month. He had four the entire month of April last year. Rick Burleson probably can help Mike Gallego more than any other player because he can identify with him being a small guy make sure that he takes the ball the other way. One of Gallego's problems in the past has been he tried to pull the ball that pitch there he'd usually try to pull it. We see him go the other way here. I think that's the Rick Burleson influence. Now here's Weiss leadoff man ground to the first his first time. And with Gallego running, he fouls it away. That's Tony LaRusso. He's, he's down five to nothing, but he's not going to sit here and let Eric Hansom get comfortable out there on the mound. Now that makes Hansom think right now, well, will he run again? And anytime you take a little of your concentration away from the hitter, it really helps him. And that's the way Tony LaRusso plays. They're five runs down, but they're not going to stop playing their own game. There's that big curve, and apparently it was a little too high when it came in over the plate. One and one. Tough for an umpire sometimes. They, they don't see these curves that often either. Well, a lot of times they break behind the plate as that one did. It has to break across the plate. And it is two and one now to Weiss. Good time for Weiss to be very patient here. They need base runners. And the power follows him. Dave Henderson, Jose Canseco, Harold Baines. After Weiss. Five to nothing. Mariners in the third. Plenty of time for open the catch up. Runner going, fouled away. Two and two. That was a perfect hit and run count. Two and one with the pitcher having a five run lead. He just wants to throw a strike. And LaRusso put the hit and run on again. And they don't think, the Mariners don't, that Weiss can pull Hanson. They've got the second baseman covering there each time that Gallego takes on. Two and two the count. Change up, a little bit low apparently. That's a great pitch following all the fastballs he's thrown wise. That's great motion with the changeup. You can see it go away from the left-handed hitter. That makes it even that makes it twice as effective. There goes Gallego. Outside ball four. Well, now Oakland is in business here as Dave Henderson will come up. Not a lot of managers would send a guy down five to nothing. Here's a look, Joe, at that last uh, Henderson at bat when he got a hustle double. Although Harold Reynolds didn't think so because of that. Reynolds got his glove down in time, he thought. The umpire said he did not. Henderson was safe at second, but he was stranded there. So Henderson, one for one. Two men on, nobody out. Strike one. You're not going to tell me that was 84 miles an hour, are you? <laughs> <laughs> They're saying 87. Okay, you made him notch it up three miles per hour anyway. Eric Hansen looking for his first win and his team's first win of the year. The big curve too high. 
Ball and a strike. Dave Henderson ducked that curve. He did not want to see any parts of that pitch. When a guy ducks at the plate, it really doesn't matter if he ducks. The umpire uses his stance as the gauge. But it's not where the catcher catches the ball. It's where it crosses the plate, whether it's called a strike or not. Change up for a strike. Well, it's sort of a fastball for a strike, a curveball that missed, and a changeup for a strike. He has such a wide range in his in his pitches, speed-wise. He throws in throws an 87 mile an hour fastball, 68 mile an hour curve, and probably a 60 mile an hour changeup. There's the curve. Martinez gets the force out at second, uh, and no chance for the double play. Reynolds holds on to it. Gallego takes third, and Canseco is coming up with two men on to try and put Oakland back into this game right now. It's a big slow curveball. Henderson tries to wait on it, but he was really back on his heels. Nice play by Martinez. You can only get one out of this play. They take the one, and that's it. Here's Canseco. He blasted one here yesterday, and he had promised Kirk Dressendorfer, the rookie starter for the A's, that he would hit one for him. And he did. A little off balance in that off speed delivery. When Ken Seiko hit the home run yesterday, John, he took a long time at the plate, admiring the shot, and then he looked over in the Mariners' dugout. He looked over there because he feels that Jim LaFever has been getting on him a lot. And so he hit the home run and he made eye contact with Jim LaFever before he started to run. Ball one, he missed badly with the curve. One ball, one strike. Here's Lefevre. Lefevre was a coach here with the Oakland A's before he took the Mariners' job, so he knows Ken Seiko well. I don't know if there's bad blood or what, but he felt that Lefevre had been getting on the first couple of days. Two and one now to Jose. He hit a home run yesterday that was one of those Reggie Jackson, who's now a coach here in Oakland, describes as a hit it, drop it, and watch it <laughs> home run. Last ball, and that one misses. Down and in. Three and one to Canseco. Baines is next. I asked Reggie Jackson once why he stood there and watched his balls go out of the ballpark. He said a great artist should admire his work. <laughs> I think Canseco agrees. Ball four and the bases are loaded for Harold Baines, the one Oakland hitter who in the past has hit that man, Eric Hansen. And Lefevre, oh my. 0 oh and 5, the Aces on the hill, big early lead, but lots of trouble and still very early in the game. It doesn't matter whether Canseco has hit you well in the past or not. You know he can hit you if you make a mistake. And that was Eric Hansen's thinking there on the mound. He said, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give him a fastball. He threw him a changeup, even though he was behind in the count. Earlier this week, Harold Baines came up with the bases loaded and cleaned him off with a double, three run double. He's Oakland's RBI leader in the first week of the season. Longtime RBI home run hitter. The best the White Sox had. Just inside ball one. Baines has uh, worn out the Mariners for a long time. Infield double play depth. One out. Bases loaded. That is a down the right field line for extra bases. Gallego scores. Dave Henderson scores. They're going to hold Canseco at third as Baines has the bases loaded double second time this week. And it's five to two with Steinbach coming up. If you won 20 consecutive games in April, a lot of good things happen to you. You have to be lucky a little bit. Here's a changeup that does not move away quite enough. Baines pulls it down into the corner. He stays back pretty well. You can see he's fooled a little bit. He extends his arm to get through the bat, through the ball, and he hits a double down the right field line. Canseco wanted to score. He came way down the line, but he was held up. Rene Latchman, the third base coach, holding him up. They're down by some runs here. Still with just one out. Strike one to Steinbach. Now Steinbach singled his first time up. And a base hit here could make this a one-run game right like that. John, this inning is an example of why Tony La Russa is such a good manager. He would not let his guys get complacent and just go die. 
he made them hit and run. He made them do things. He made them think that they're still in the ball game. And I think that hitting hit and run with Al Weiss was really what started these guys to thinking, hey, we can come back this inning. Ball and a strike to Steinbach. McGuire is on deck. That will get a run home. Kensinko will score, and this count is not picking up. All hands are safe. Baines to third, it's five to three, and here comes McGuire. Again, to win 20 consecutive games, you have to be lucky. And this is part of it. This ball is choppy. He handled it, hit it off the hands, and it had a little erratic spin on it when it got to the scale. See him, he was going straight in for the ball, and then he has to reach off to his left. It's an error, but it wasn't an easy play like it seemed to be at first. That's Mike Paul, a pitching coach for the Mariners. This ball game starting out like an NBA game. <laughs> yeah, Oakland. wait till the last inning. Huh? Oakland's making its run here, down by five against an outstanding pitcher. And now the tying runs are on the bases. Baines at third, Steinbach at first, and here's McGuire. Strike, and McGuire, as he almost always does, he was he was going for the fences. 0-1. McGuire is what you call a back leg hitter. He hits everything off his back leg, kind of leaning back. Thus, he has an uppercut swing. That's why he hits a lot of fly balls, also why he hits a lot of home runs. And if you throw the good fastball above the belt, they have trouble handling it. He has trouble handling it. He'd like to get Baines home. He's at third with just one out. There's Steinbach at first. The Mariners hoping for the double play. Takes the curve low. Two and one. Hanson scuffling now. The inning started with a Gallego single, and then he walked Weiss. Five to three, Mariners. The two under the lead. Ball three. Willie Wilson on deck. That's what makes baseball such a great game. You expect a Dave Stewart and an Eric Hansen to have a low run ball game, but now we're looking at five to three, and we're only in the third. Oh, look out! one knocked the face mask right off of Rick Reed's head and that's he's going to have a few cobwebs in <laughs> that that does not feel good McGuire is going for the downs and he gets a piece of it Ooh. hit him on the left shoulder and then knocked his mask off that was a good pitch by Hanson McGuire couldn't have done much with it had him tied up inside Game right after. Now it's three and two. We'll keep an eye on Steinbach, the runner at first. Since McGuire strikes out a lot, it's not automatic that they will send Steinbach from first base. He's not going. And a walk. Funny, Joe. He wasn't handling the fastball, and he threw in the off-speed pitch. I here. agree. A lot of times when you stand on the mound and you get in trouble, you lose your trend of thought. That's a changeup or something, and you know, a way outside. You're always afraid to throw the fastball to the big guys because you say, if I miss in the middle of the plate, they're going to hurt me. Willie Wilson drove in a couple of runs yesterday with a bloop single to center. He's got a chance to do that here. The bases are loaded. A base hit could tie the game. One out. Wilson did not hit many double play balls. Blew that fastball by him. Strike one. Hanson has now thrown 29 pitches in this inning alone. Three runs are in. Three men are on. Only one out. That changeup fooled him. Strike two. The Mariners are going to get their bullpen busy. On deck, Ernest Riles. Wilson is the eighth athletic batter to come to bat in this inning. Baines at third, Steinbach at second, the possible tying run, and McGuire at first. Two strikes to Wilson. And the curveball, that's the pitch with which he struck out Willie earlier, and uh, this time he takes it low. It's Russ Swan, left handed, up in the Seattle bullpen. A ball and two strikes to Willie. 
the outfield shades him toward left a bit. Looks like uh, right field is going to be a tough sun field now for a while. That curveball up the middle. Can they turn two? And Vizcal just barely gets one. He and Reynolds colliding. Coming in to score is Bain. Steinbach to third. Wilson safe at first. I don't know that it was a sure double play anyway because of Wilson's speed. Well, I, it was. they were going to have a chance, but that's lack of communication. It's actually the shortstop's ball. Anytime the, the shortstop is coming across the bag, see, he's coming to pitch the ball up, tag second, and go to first for the double play. But Reynolds had gone after it, and he did not communicate with Vizquel. Thus, he tries to leap over him, but he almost knocks him off balance so that he can't even get the man at second base. He got that knee right in the head, the left knee of Reynolds uh, hitting Vizquel. And, and you notice there, for a, a second or two, he seemed to be disoriented. He couldn't quite find second base at first. Rick Griffin, the trainer out there, along with the manager Jim Lefevre. Harold Reynolds is a very fine defensive second baseman, so he wants to get everything he can. But in this situation, that is the shortstop's play because he has a better chance to turn the double play coming across the bag toward first base. See, the ball's on the shortstop side, and it's his play. He's in position to get it. Reynolds just actually goes too far out of his way to get the ground ball. And then Vizquel just barely got McGuire there. Where's the bag? There it is. <laughs> just barely in time. All right, Vizquel's okay. He's got a few cobwebs, I imagine. Give Wilson an RBI in the force out. It is now five to four. The ninth man to bat in the inning is this man, Ernest Riles. He was called out on that big handsome curveball back in the second. And Wilson, they are going to have to keep an eye on him. He's been stealing bases for a long time. He stole 24 last year for Kansas City as a part-time player. It's ball one. Only his teammate, Ricky Henderson, and the new base stealer of the White Sox, Rock Reigns, are ahead of Willie Wilson in the all-time active stolen base list. That's a called strike. Riles with two down trying to bring home the tying run, and uh, that's represented by that man, Terry Steinbach. He's at third base. And Wilson, the possible go-ahead run, is over at first base. So Brian on the bag with it. Ball and a strike to Riles. Change up missing. Two and one. I wonder, Joe, if the, the readings we're getting on the radar gun about his fastball being well below 90. Maybe just didn't have the good fastball tonight. I think he had the good fastball early. Right to O'Brien, and that will end the nightmarish inning. But the Oakland Athletics are right back in this one for Hanson. Five to four after a four-run third. <laughs> Looks like this. Hanson got rocked in the third. And uh, Stewart got rocked in the first two as he faces the ninth place hitter, Omar Vizquel, to lead things off here in the fourth. Reynolds, a two run double, big hit in the second for the Mariners. And then Baines fueling the Oakland comeback with his two run double with the bases loaded in the third. Vizquel walked in that second inning rally and scored a run. One ball, one strike to count. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan. Joe, how do you think this is going to turn out? Five to four after just three. That's Gallego's ball. Got a tough hop, but stayed with it. Fielded it nicely, one away. We expected Dave Stewart to settle down if he could last, you know, through the second inning, and he did. And he's throwing a lot better now. He seems to have more confidence in his location now. Location was his problem at the beginning of the ball game, and he has that now. And I think he'll pitch well for the rest of the ball game. But I also think Hanson will regroup as well, and we'll have a you know a good ball game down the stretch because I think both of these guys will be able to get back on their games. Here's Harold Reynolds who has struck out, but then he hit that two-run second inning double on a 3-1 pitch from Stewart. That's ball one outside. Well, you were mentioning about taking Stewart out or leaving him in there when he was looking very poor. There's ball two. And last night in Houston, the ball club from across the bay, San Francisco, they were knocking around Houston's Mike Scott early. That's a strike.
strike, two and one. And so they took him out with a score five nothing. Same score. The score last night there ended up 16 to two. Although what Larusa has to deal with out of his pen and what Art Howe has to deal with probably different subjects entirely. Looks like the wind is blowing the ball out in that left field area. The way he's going after a couple of balls, carrying well out there. Two men gone. Yeah, Reynolds doesn't muscle up like that very often. Here at the Coliseum, here's a look at one of the souvenir stands. You know, Joe, I used to sell uh, popcorn and soda here. I was a vendor at the Coliseum. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back in the old days, here is Riley. I was considered uh, a real celebrity among the vendors of this ballpark when I became a broadcaster. You know. Oh, did you toss things around like some of the guys we see on television? No, I was a very conservative vendor. Stewart, and he's going to take it himself. Stu has retired eight straight Mariners. Gallego, Weiss, and Dave Henderson coming up 5 4. Seattle leading after three and a half. Hey, and we are hard on the east side of the bay, the East Bay here in Oakland. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan. That's where we are. The Oakland Coliseum. We got a wild one going. Mariners five, Athletics four. As we go to the last half of the fourth inning. Well, Dave Stewart has a little more pep in his step. He's throwing fruit, fewer pitches. He seems to be on his game. This is the Dave Stewart that we all know and love. He grabs it and decides he'll take it himself. Cincinnati Reds don't love him. <laughs> and he doesn't love them. It's Oakland Ball Club, very talented, but also very self confident. And, and a lot of the opposition uh, feels are very cocky. They don't like this ball club. Well, I think success breeds confidence, and they've been very successful. So they have a right to be confident in their ability. Here's Mike Gallego, who was the igniter in that third inning. He started their four-run rally that has him right back in the game. That was the 70th pitch thrown by Hanson already, by the way. We're only in the fourth. Dave Stewart, as Gallego takes a strike. Stewart threw 87 in the first three innings, but in the fourth, further evidence that he's gotten it together, only eight pitches thrown by Stewart. Gallego, the hitter. One and one the count. Ooh, chased a bad one up around his shoulders. Weiss on deck, then Dave Henderson. See, last April, four for 44 in the entire month, but six for 14 already this April. Two years ago, he had a very good start to the year. Curveball. One and two, and he's uh, got the third baseman backed up, and he shows bunt. Well, it's tough to bunt. A two strike curveball. So you have to get it fair. You don't have much margin for error. So you don't want to run it right down the line. You end up bunting it back to the pitcher. And the curveball makes it three and two. Mickey Mantle used to bunt a lot with two strikes. But he would drag the ball to the right side and beat it out most of the time. Three call, a fastball on the outside. Well, Gallego made him work, but Hanson gets his fifth strikeout. Again, Hanson and Stewart, I expect them to pitch well from this point on. Hanson throws an excellent fastball knee high over the outside corner. Not a lot that Gallego could do with it. Hanson seems to lose the plate in his motion there. Strike one to Weiss, the leadoff man, the switch hitter. Grounded to first and walked. Five to four Mariners in the last of the fourth inning. Curveball, a beauty. Strike two. Well, it is a one-run ball game, and that's what they usually pitch anyway. It just happens to be five to four instead of one to nothing. Curve misses. One ball, two strikes. Dave Henderson is on deck. I once had a pitcher tell me it's tougher to win a game seven to six than it is one to nothing. And that one brushes him back. Well, especially if you give up six, it's tough to win. Well, he was <laughs> <laughs> tough to count on getting six. Yeah, but I think his point was that you'd have a lot more uh, base runners on base, but you'd have to pitch out of a lot more, lot more jams than you would have if you beat somebody one to nothing. Well, I think that's why Roger Clemens does so well. Nobody ever gets anybody on base. Yeah. <laughs> it's that old Bob Gibson story. 
guy said Bob Gibson's the luckiest pitcher in the world because when he pitches, the other team doesn't score. <laughs> Every time he pitches, the other team's in a slump. <laughs> right. <laughs> Joint two, the count to Weiss. We're not nobody on in the four. There's the big curve, and he struck him out. Six strikeouts for Hanson. I think Harrison Hanson lost his concentration a little bit in the third inning. He went away from the things that have made him successful the first couple. And when you lose your concentration with the Oakland A's, you get hurt. That's a perfect curveball, right? About knee high, and not a lot that Wise could do with it. Here's Dave Henderson now. He has doubled and hit into a force play. Change that ball one. Five to four the score. Well, Hanson is only 25 years of age. Got off to a slow start last year. It was only six and six. Very high ERA, but then put it together in the summertime. On the outside for a strike. He finished the year 12 out of his last 15. And seven straight. Right at the end, yeah. yeah. The last seven. A ball and a strike to Dave Henderson. Curveball is a high foul. Long run for O'Brien, but a lot of room in which to give chase here more than anywhere else. They ran out of the room there. Well, with that great curveball, you can understand he's going to get his strikeouts. He is tonight, and he certainly did last year. Well, he was third behind the duo of Ryan and Witt for Texas. He even finished ahead of Clemens, but you have to remember Clemens missed a few starts. He's already thrown 84 pitches in this one, has Hanson. The one-two pitch on the way. The curve bounces in the dirt. Two and two. I guess in the American League, I mean, Burt Blyler had the curveball for so many years that everybody was measured against his curve. The top accolade for a curveball pitcher is that he's got a Blylevin type curve. The difference between Hanson's curve and Blylevin's though is Blylevin had a hard curve, a soft curve, and a medium curve. Hanson's is one speed. It's pretty much a slow curve with a big break. I, uh, in Baltimore, the relief pitcher, Greg Olson's yeah. got the great curve, and he'll throw it at different speeds. You can be fooled by the speed of the pitch and also the break when you change speeds on the curveball. 3 2 pitch down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble, it's foul. <laughs> so it's still 3 and 2 to Dave Henderson. If he can get on, we'll see Jose Canseco here. Best curveball you ever faced, Sandy Koufax? Well, Sandy's, you could not see the rotation on it because it was so hard and tight. But I faced a lot of great curveballs. At least they look great to me. Anderson could not make that one stay fair. Three and two, the count to him. Two down. His athletics trailing Hanson's Mariners by one. That's foul. Dave Henson. Henderson is a good fastball hitter, but he's a little defensive right now because he's not sure that Hanson's going to come with the fastball. So he's waiting a little longer and he's a little behind the fastball. But you have to protect against the great curveball that Hanson has. Henderson making Hanson wait here. Cool, windy night at Oakland. The sun is shining. Now, Feel very deep, even with two strikes. Here is the pitch. Just a bit low. That was a close one. <laughs> Dave Henderson is signaling outside, and Hanson is not so sure. He thought he had strike three. Hanson thinks he gets this knee high in the outside corner. Rick Reed says it's either low or a little off the plate. Henderson says outside he said no 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 <laughs> he has fun playing the game always has a smile on his face here is Canseco curveball ball one Canseco walked in the third struck out in the first and Hanson now has walked four men in the game with six strikeouts Jose Canseco the back is all healed up he was on his way to a Awesome year. 50 homers, maybe. Last year. And that was even though in the month of June, he missed almost the whole month with an injury, a couple of injuries. And then the last 45 games of the season, 
He had that back injury and hit only three home runs the last 45 games. It's a high drive. It'll stay in the park in right center. Caught by Buner. That's the end. It looked like Griffey might have had a little trouble picking it up at first. One man left at the end of four. Seattle five, the Athletics four. In San Francisco Bay Area. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball will be with you again next Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, 2 o'clock Hawaiian. Can we leave anybody out? <laughs> next Sunday will be in Montreal, indoors, the Expos and the Mets. There's a called strike to Edgar Martinez. Dave Stewart has retired eight straight. And after falling behind five to nothing, he's now just behind by one, five to four. Martinez has twice walked against him. The slider misses, and it's a ball under strike. Griffey and Davis will follow the three, four, and five hitters for the Mariners. And all three of these guys capable of hitting 300. Martinez and Griffey did last year. That's a close one. Ball two. Omar Vizcal, uh, Joe, who got hit in the head by the knee of Reynolds in that strange play at second base a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Martinez hits it to Weiss. Look out! Wow. That one stays in play and... Uh, well, actually, it hit in the photographer's booth. They're going to award him second base because right. that ball is not in play if it hits in the photographer's booth. It came back on the field of play, but only after hitting out of play. So he gets second base. Error shortstop. Two base error. Weiss comes up with it and he releases it like he has a sore shoulder actually and the ball bounces into the photography booth in the back out. Watch how his elbow is down low and he kind of releases the ball from behind right there. You have to get on top of the ball from the shortstop. You get on top for two reasons. You want the ball to have a certain type of rotation on it that will keep it going straight. And you want to get on top of the ball. And you saw the ball hit that railing at the back of the photographer's uh, area there, which is out of play. Here's Ken Griffey Jr. First error for the Athletics and a rare one for Walt Weiss. And Griffey chased it. He singled the center driving in a run of the first, the first Seattle run, and then he hit one back to Stewart in the second. He is one for two. Five to four Seattle. Five runs and five hits with an error to four runs and four hits with an error. Nobody out. Griffey bunts it, but foul up the first base side. That's a smart play, I believe, right there, because he will advance the runner over to third base if he doesn't get a base hit, and if he gets a base hit, it's first and third, no one out. And right now, the Mariners need to make something happen. They can't stay with five runs and expect Hanson to hold them off, the A's off for the rest of the ball game. So you have to make some things happen. I think that was a very smart play by Griffey there. Griffey do that himself or did Lefevre call for that? I would think that he did it himself simply because he tried to drag the ball. He didn't square around. In the right center, Dave Henderson going back. And he's got tagging at second is Martinez. And he'll go down to third. He got the job done anyway by pulling the ball to the right side. One away, runner at third. Griffey's a good low fastball hitter. This is a low fastball. He hits it hard. But Dave Henderson tracks it down in right center field. No chance for Henderson to keep Martinez from advancing to third base. And here's Alvin Davis. Now the Athletics bring their infield in at the corners and in halfway at shortstop and second base. Davis has singled home a run and fly deep to left. Strike one, says Rick Reed. Here's a look at the uh, the defense. Well, the infield came all the way in with the pitch. When you play a guy halfway on the infield, really you're putting him in no man's land because the ball's not hit hard enough. He can't go to the plate with it. Well, here they come in again. The ball is fouled off to the left. This time, actually, Gallego at second came creeping in as the pitch came, but Weiss stayed back halfway at shortstop. We mentioned uh, Vizquel. We don't know if he's going to stay in the game because Jeff Schaefer. Utility infielder is warming up down the right field line in the Mariner bullpen. I started to mention that earlier. Big uh, moment here. There's a Schaefer. Runner at third. Mariners lead by just one. Pop 
tripped him up. Chasing his riles, and he can't hang on to it. Right at the top step of the dugout. Anytime you have to run near the stands, your mind says, I'm getting close to the stands, and your eyes are trying to stay on the baseball. So he sneaks a peek right there, and I think that's what cost him the catch. He looks up a couple of times. Now he tries to find the ball again. And he wasn't even at the top step. He was just getting close. Two strikes to Alvin Davis. Look out. Look at Alvin. He's right on top of the plate, too. It surprises me that he stands so close to the plate because he really doesn't handle the ball inside as well as he does the ball out over the plate. One and two to Alvin, trying to bring that run home from third with one out. He struck him out. Stewart got him to chase that high fastball up around his shoulders. Stewart was actually trying to come inside tight with a fastball. See where Steinbach sets up? He wanted the ball inside. Stewart gets a high fastball up and out away from him. Davis can't lay off of it. Boy, is he upset? Well, he's upset because he does not swing at a lot of bad pitches. He's very disciplined at the plate. He's a very disciplined hitter. And also, he does not get that run home from third. Now, two down. Here is O'Brien. He has hit into a double play, and he has struck out. Well, that tells you something about Stewart, too. I mean, he's got a runner at third, good RBI man up there. He needs a strikeout, and he got it. Five to four Mariners trying to add to their total here. In the right center. Stewart will get out of this trouble as Dave Henderson puts it away. A two base error to start the inning, but they do not score. For the score here, don't forget Tuesday, the undefeated, they're undefeated so far, Chicago White Sox and the Yankees. White Sox making a run at Harold Baines in his Oakland Athletics and off to a great start on the road. Baines in the left field, and Briley makes the running catch. He thought that was going to start sinking, but it kept sailing. It was a nice play by Brawley because he did start in thinking it would sink and had to go back and keep his eyes on the ball. Nice play. Good concentration. In the twilight, with still a bright blue sky overhead, tough time of day to get a good jump in well, the ball? I think it is if, you, if the sun is directly over the stands. It's behind it a little bit. And the hitter's in the shadows completely now, so it should be okay to pick it up. Here is Steinbach, who has singled and been safe in an error, has a run batted in. Five to four. Hit off of home plate and foul. New shortstop is in there for the Mariners, just as we expected. There is Jeff Schaefer out of the University of Maryland, replacing Omar Vizquel. And as soon as we get a report about Vizquel, we'll pass it on to you. He got a knee right in the head. Very odd play at second back in the third inning. Steinbach, McGuire, and Wilson coming in. Oakland down by a run. Hanson misses badly. One and two. Well, those White Sox got rained out today at Detroit. They're four and zero. Oh. They've given up three runs in four games. Jack McDowell's got two wins already. The one-two pitch. Look out inside. Two and two. No less than a third than Jim Leland. We saw the White Sox a lot in the spring. He says he couldn't say they'd overtake Oakland, but he says they're going to be awfully, awfully good. Well, they're the team that gave Oakland the most trouble in head-to-head -head battles last year. Curveball is lifted to shallow right. Buhner. He's still wearing the sunglasses out there. Two down in the fifth inning. Let's look at that sky high over Oakland as Mark McGuire gets ready to bat. So Chicago rained out today. Here in the West, the California Angels nine to four over Minnesota. Finley won his second in a row. Gary Gaetti had another big day. Seven for 14 he went at the Metrodome over the weekend for the Angels. Polonia stole three bases. In the last two days at the Metrodome, the Angels scored 24 runs. And Oakland will go to Anaheim tomorrow night. There's a changeup swung on a mist, and you saw what you were talking about earlier with McGuire. 
Yeah, the change of speeds really hurts a guy that doesn't handle the fastball inside because you have to protect against the fastball. Now they're going inside with the fastball. Well, they got it away from him, and he hit it hard. And then slicing foul. Looks like uh, the ball is high in the air down there. It's not carrying very well down that direction. They set up to throw the fastball inside, but watch how McGuire stays back on his back leg, drops his back shoulder. That's why he gets the ball in the air so much. But again, when he gets it in the air and hits it well, it goes out of the ballpark. And 39 times last year, they made the mistake of letting him get in the air. The ball and two strikes to McGuire. Two down, nobody on. We're in the fifth inning. Takes that fastball. Two and two. In this bowl like ballpark, you see those pennants that go around the top of the uh, the bleachers. And they'll at the same time be blowing in different directions. Curveball is low, three and two. Very difficult to know the the wind patterns in this ballpark. Sunday night baseball on ESPN from Oakland. We're in the last of the fifth. The Mariners lead the Athletics five to four. And the changeup on three and two misses, and Hansen wasn't so sure. Ball four, that is his fifth walk. Both he and Stewart have given themselves an awful lot of trouble with those bases on balls. The reason the Cincinnati Reds were able to handle the A so well in the World Series, this pitch would have been a fastball inside from one of the Reds' hard throwers. And that's the way you have to go after Mark McGuire. But if you don't feel that you can throw the fastball by him, then you have to try to trick him. And that's what Hanson tried to do there. Willie Wilson fouls it away down the left field line. Toronto uh, beat Milwaukee today. Jimmy Key threw a two hit shutout. And the Blue Jays are off to a fast start over in the East. I've always liked Jimmy Key. And when he's healthy, he's a very fine pitcher. And uh, that's a strike to Wilson on the inside. Two strikes a count. Eric Hansen, he's worked hard already. He's only in the fifth inning. And he's thrown about eight innings worth of pitches. A hundred four. Two down, runner at first in the fifth. Curveball, foul. Dave McKay, the Oakland first base coach, grabs it. Doesn't like the looks of it. Come on, Dan, give me a hot dog. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He's got a souvenir out there. But he's Dan got an A's, to it. He's got an A's cap on and a Mets warm up jacket. And he's got his dad's uh, souvenir baseball, and he's not going to get it back. Wilson swings and misses at that high fastball. Rick Reed says he actually foul tipped it. Same result, strikeout number seven for Hanson. 5 4 Seattle. Hometown of my partner, Joe Morgan. <laughs> Hometown kid made good. Here is Jay Buhner, the seventh place hitter, leading it off for the Mariners against Dave Stewart, and that one was ball one. Five to four Seattle. And indeed, these two pitchers for whom we had forecasted a great pitchers duel are starting to give it to us now. The owner hits one high and deep into left. Wilson back. And forget about it. A home run for Buhner. A soaring shot. That was a beauty. That was high. And it was deep. They'd like to see him get a chance to do that all season. He's never been healthy enough to do it. Stewart does not look pleased. Six to four Seattle. Well, he missed with the first pitch was a curveball, and he thought it was a strike. And then he had to come back with the fastball, one and oh. And Buna puts a charge into it. It's about the middle of the plate and down. He's a little bit out in front, but he drops his back shoulder like McGuire. That's why it went so high. So here is Dave Valley. Strike one. By the way, Stewart has now thrown something like 113 pitches. Bullpen activity for the Athletics. Valley backs away. They're in the sixth, six to four Mariners. It's the first home run of the ball game, the first of the year for Buner. And the first that Buner, as you see, Joe Klink, the young left hander warming up for Oakland. First home run that Buner has ever hit against Dave Stewart. The 1 1 delivery. The breaking ball misses inside. Ball two. Well, the 
Mariners, if they can get Buner healthy all year with the guy like Griffey, who keeps getting better and better, Alvin Davis, Edgar Martinez, they could have some some thump in that batting line. That's a base hit to right field for Valley. His second hit of the game. A lot of hitting instructors like to see a guy go the other way. And this is a perfect example of a guy hitting the fastball away and taking it the other way. It's nine box set up on the outside corner. The ball's outside and he drives it that way. Good piece of hitting by Valley. Valley talking it over with Mark McGuire. As Jeff Schaefer steps up. Came on for Vizquel. We still have not uh, heard what's going on with uh, Vizquel. We don't get hit in the head, and apparently that's the reason he get, get taken out of this game. Hit by the knee of Harold Reynolds. And Riles went to the mound to talk to Stewart. They wanted to give Clink a little more time to warm up because if Stewart gets in trouble again, he will come out of the ball game, I think, this time. Nobody out. Schaefer bunts the ball. Stewart will go to second. He got him with Weiss covering. Was not a good bunt by Schaefer. You want to make the first baseman feel this ball, and he bunts it halfway between first and the pitcher's mound, and Stewart being a fine fielder off the mound very quickly and fires to Weiss in time to get Valley at second base. Well, that's Stewart's job, isn't it? To, yeah. To cover up that first base line. He was already he was already on the move. So Schaefer aboard with one out. Here is Harold Reynolds, the leadoff man, one for three, with two battered in. Schaefer, the runner at first. Schaefer, by the way, I showed you earlier out of the University of Maryland, his father is an attorney and judge in the state of New York. Ball one to Reynolds. Speaking of bloodlines, Reynolds had two brothers that played in the major league. Don played for the Padres, and Larry Reynolds played for the Rangers. Harold Reynolds. He's one of those players that gives back to the community, very in involved in civic affairs, charities. Little fly ball. Canseco gets a late break. Now he's there. And the ball almost blew back over his head. <laughs> and you see, that was something that could have happened to anyone. But because now he has a reputation of being a poor fielder, the fans get on him for any little thing that happens out there. He comes in, he thinks he has it gauged, but has to reach back over him a little bit. But again, you talked about the breezes here, and he says, oh man, well he's reacting to the fans, you know, murmurs for him making uh, the over the shoulder catch. Gee. Here is Briley, and he takes ball one. Briley has walked, hit a sacrifice fly, and hit one right back to Stewart. He is 0 for 1 officially. 6 4 Mariners in the sixth inning. A big run brought home by Jay Buhner with his first home run of the year. Runner at first, two down. Ball two to Briley. On deck is Edgar Martinez. Nationally today, the Mets won again. Mets are off to a fine start, five and two. National League East. Viola got the win today. There's Gallego. He can't come up with it. And everybody's safe. And Martinez will get a chance to bat with a couple of men on here. Rusty Coons talking with Briley over there at first. They're going to score that a base hit for Briley. It's a hard ground ball up the middle. Gallego gets there, but he doesn't get the glove down in time. And it goes off his glove in the short center field. Here is Edgar Martinez. He's walked twice and he's been safe on a Walt Weiss error. So he's been on base three straight times. 0 for 1 officially. He'll get his walks. He was uh, one of the top on base men among the third baseman last year in the majors. Well, nearly a wild pitch in that slider. Weiss came up with it awkwardly and in rather unlikely fashion. It's a hard slider by Dave Stewart. Watch Steinbach. You usually try to backhand that ball. He catches it with the palm of the glove facing down. You usually have to backhand it. He took it the tough way, but he made the play. The way he took it, it was almost like a miracle. Way. <laughs> Kids, don't try that at no, home. He's a highly that. paid professional. 
And he may never try that again either. That was just desperation at that point, I guess. Just hit the glove out and hope for the best. Two on, two out. Two and oh, the count. Ooh. Three and oh. Dave Stewart said, ooh. Well, this Standing could be the end the of mound. Yeah, this could be the end of Stewart if he doesn't get to Martinez. Ken Griffey Jr. on deck and Tony La Russa has Joe Klink, a left-hander, ready in the bullpen. Mariners already lead by two. We're in the sixth. Fastball for a strike, three and one. Martinez looks to Bill Plummer, the third base coach. Both runners ready to go on anything. Schaefer at second, Briley from first. And they're already running and safe. A double steal for the Mariners. What a surprise. I think everyone was surprised. There's Briley over to second and Schaefer. The front end of the double steal to third. Schaefer took off first and then Briley just took off following him. The throw by Steinbach is offline. Nice play by Rouse to keep it from going in the left field. Three and two the count. And ball four. And uh, with the bases loaded and Griffey coming up, let's see what LaRusa has in mind. And here he comes out of the Oakland dugout. That was the 127th pitch thrown by Stu. And here in the sixth, Joey's looking tired. Well, I think he is a little tired. Throwing that many pitches under so much pressure it takes its toll over you during a ball game. So Stewart gives the ball to LaRusa, and Clink is coming on with three men on, two men down, and Ken Griffey Jr. trying to break this game open for the Mariners. Again, 6 4 Seattle with Clink coming in. Going to give uh, Ramada something else to remember in the future, right here. Bases loaded, two down. Chance to bust the game open. Mariners lead 6 4, and Clink throws him a strike. Joe Clink, this is what he specializes in, Joe. Well, he tries to get left-handers out with the breaking ball. He started Griffey off with one on the inside part of the plate. And that's right to Gallego at second. And the inning is over. Frank, not only is tough on lefties, but when he inherits runners, he strands them. Stranded three right here. From Oakland, California. Every Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern, we'll be with you. For our special Sunday night baseball series. And tonight, the Mariners trying to win their first game of the year. The Texas Rangers won their first of the year earlier today back at Nolan Ryan. And uh, Texas got Ryan 15 runs just to make sure that he would win it. His 303rd victory. Texas beat Baltimore 15 to 3 today. Here's Ernest Riles. He has struck out and grounded to the first, facing Eric Hansen. Hansen has a two run lead, 6 to 4 now. Field pretty deep. Riley going back. He's waiting now. No way. Dave Stewart knocked out in the sixth inning. Five and two thirds innings, six runs, eight hits, five walks, five strikeouts, one home run, and he threw 127 pitches. The five base on balls tells a real story. Not only did he walk five guys, but he was behind a lot, and that gave these guys an opportunity to sit on the fastball and do some damage. So it's not always the amount of batters you walk or the number of batters you walk, but it's also how many times you're behind the hitter. Here's Gallego. He has a single, starting a four-run rally. Back in the third, and he struck out looking in the fourth, and he takes a strike here. In this American League West, get the White Sox out to a 4-0 start. California's 5-1. Kansas City's 4-2. They won today over the Yankees. Boddicker winning. Strike. Minnesota, two and four at the start of the year, although they seem to be improved. Texas won its first game earlier today. The Rangers potentially with a very strong starting rotation. Ball two. It's going to be a, it's a tough division. You could have a pretty good team and finish fifth to six. It looks like. Which is not a scenario the Mariners care to uh, take on. Ball three. California Angels with Dave Winfield, Dave Parker, and some veteran players, Bly Levin, Parrish. They kind of remind me of the 1983 Philadelphia Phillies called the Weeds Kids because of age. 
These guys are veterans. They know how to play. And I will not be surprised if they are the real challenge for the Oakland A's during the 1991 season. Sixth walk on by Hanson. Don't forget next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern. We'll have our coast to coast coverage as the Mets and their new leadoff man, Vince Coleman. He's already stolen four times. And the Expos, who love to run, Delano de Shields also has stolen four already from uh, Stade Olympique in uh, Montreal. Sixth walk issued by Hansen. That's already a career worst for him. Most walks he's ever allowed in a big league game as Weiss takes a strike. And the Mariner bullpen jumps into action now. Runner first one out, open down by a pair. And that's the ball. One ball, one strike. The last in the third inning, they were in this position, and Larusa put the hit and run on. Renee Latchman relays the signs to Weiss and Gallego. Third baseman Martinez playing shallow. Gallego is back. O'Brien on the bag with him there. When they were down by four runs, Larusa started the runners and came up with a four-run inning. See if he does something here. You see Valley, is he looking over at Lefevre for a sign? Yes, but Weiss is really studying Renee Latchman. He gave him the sign, and he stepped out and wanted it again. That usually means they have to take off the hit and run if they had it on. There goes Gallego, inside. And they got him easily. A busted hit and run. Well, well what happens when you look down and, they, and the hitter steps out and they have to get the sign again, you as the defensive team think that they're going to hit and run. They may be doing something. So they come with a good fastball inside. Straight fastball and Gallego looking at the hitter tells me that he was thinking it was going to be a hit and run. He was not on a straight steal. Weiss in the left center field base hit. And that's usually what happens. Well, did they take the hit and run off and Gallego missed the sign? No, I don't think they took it off. I think the Mariners just defense to play very well by coming inside with the fastball. In other words, Weiss had to get out of the way to exactly. avoid being hit. And it was a good fastball, which means it gets to the plate a little lot quicker than his slow curve or his changeup. So that gave Valley a good chance to throw Gallego out, and he made a good throw. Two down, runner at first. That's the fifth Oakland hit. Here is Dave Henderson, who has a double. He's hit into a force play, and he has walked. Double barrel activity in the Seattle bullpen. The left-hander Russ Swan and the right-hander Gene Harris both warming up out there. Walt Weiss, the runner at first. He's now one for three. Curveball. If Henderson was ducking under that one. There's the Seattle bullpen. Swan the lefty, Harris the right-hander. They're missing their closer right now, Mike Schooler. One of the tough closers in the league. Right. Slicing, and it's a fair ball. Here comes Weiss rounding third. He's heading home. The relay by Reynolds is going to be close. He's safe. The ball gets passed. It's rolling toward the Oakland dugout. And here comes Henderson. The ball is into the dugout, and he will score. It's all tied up. to win 20 consecutive games in April and Dave Stewart is showing that he's also good but he's lucky this ball is just fair in fact it might have hit the foul line Buner comes up fires it in Reynolds fires to the plate the ball skips away from Valley and Dave Henderson keeps right on running. He was going to be able to score anyway because the ball went into the dugout. Home plate umpire Rick Reed there is pointing to the plate, meaning he's going to be able to come in anyway. And Eric Hansen was standing in the middle of the diamond. He yeah. wasn't backing up. 
So it's a double for Henderson and a run battered in, and an error has to be charged to Reynolds because he made the throw. Yeah. Tough error for a guy. But they had a shot at the plate. But the ball skipped away. There's Jim Lefevre saying, what do we have to do to win a ball game? We have not been able to score runs. We score six with our top pitcher on the mound. And now we're in a tie ball game. Six to six. Here's Canseco trying to untie it. Curveball a strike. That was a beauty. Well, a double for Dave Henderson. He takes third in the throw home and scores on the error charge to Reynolds. Hanson might have been able to prevent him from scoring had he backed up. Another curve, another strike. And then the ball was deflected off the glove of Valley and away from where Hanson would have been. He still might not have been able to come up with it. Strike three makes short work of Canseco. But the damage has already been done. Two runs, two hits, and an error. It's all tied up at the end of six. Six, here we go to the seventh. We got changes for the athletics now. Gallego has moved from second base over to shortstop. And replacing him at second base is Lance Blankenship. And Walt Weiss, perhaps when he was scoring from first base on the Henderson double, uh, perhaps that's when it happened, but he has suffered a strained hamstring, which has put him on the shelf here. Alvin Davis, a left-handed hitter, leads it off against the left-hander. Joe Klink, another lefty. Pete O'Brien to follow in the seventh inning. Ball one. Davis is one for three with a run batted in. Oakland's bullpen is busy as we start the seventh. But not with the likes of Rick Honeycutt, for instance. And well to center, but Dave Henderson right there waiting. Yeah, put it away. One down. Here's the throw by Harold Reynolds. Right in the middle of your pitcher, right there is the pitcher who should be backing up. The ball got away and it rolled into the A's dugout and you can see they're very happy there. They know that the tying run will score. And Dave Henderson brings it home and he does everything with a flare. Pete O'Brien takes a strike. He's hit into a double play, struck out and flying to right center. 0 for 3, 6 to 6 in the 7th. Now the Mariner bullpen also gets busy. Both bullpens are busy. One misses. One out, nobody out. There is right-hander Steve Chitron, rookie, working out of the Oakland bullpen now. They like him a lot, but he has very little big league experience. It's a ball, two and one. In the Seattle bullpen, left-hander Russ Swan is warming up. Gene Nelson and Rick Honeycutt, both men you might expect to be warming up this time of the game, are both out with injuries right now. Two and one the count. Three and one. The right-handed hitting Buner is on deck, so this may be the final batter that Clink will face. Very high in the air, the shallow right. Blankenship out, Canseco in, Canseco takes. And Brian is 0 for 4, two men gone. Ken Seiko gets a kick out of the fans. <laughs> Here comes La Russa now with the right-handed hitting Buner coming up. Mariners have only one left-handed hitter on their bench tonight, and that is a catcher, Scott Bradley. And Tony has already made the call, so Steve Chitron will be coming in. So we'll get a look here at the young Chitron, who was born in Tokyo. He's only 23 years of age. And on his way into this ball game. For years, if you wanted a beauty. 11, the Emmy Award winning ESPN Sports Center. After the ball game. Six to six, seventh inning, two down, nobody on. And here's the rookie, the sensation out of Stanford, Steve Chitron. Ball one to Jay Buner. Buner. Single in the second, starting a three-run rally. Struck out in the third, and then he homered in the sixth. Two for three. And that, I guess, is the stock and trade of Chitron. He's got an excellent breaking ball. Well, he throws a variety of breaking balls. Hard slider, little curve ball. 23 years of age, out of Stanford. 3-0 the count. 
We saw him in the College World Series with Stanford. He was the, ESPN was doing the ball game. He was the closer for two different Stanford champions in 87 and 88. Mark uh, Marcus, the coach there. Strike. Jack McDowell now starring with the White Sox. Already two wins this year. He's on uh, one of those clubs, wasn't he? Six to six. Chitron has his degree in biology from Stanford. That foul will go back out of play. Three and two. Remember the last time Buner was up there. He gets a low fastball from Dave Stewart. He drops his hands, and this is a pitch that he can hit best, a low fastball, because when you drop your hands, it's tough to get them back up. But 3-2 pitch, he walks this time. Dave Bally will come up. All right. Got Eric Davis. Davis. Yeah. Right. They're both good low fastball hitters. They can hit the low pitch because your hands are already down there and you can just attack the ball from there. But it's tough to get back up and get on top of the high fastball. Dave Valley, the eighth place hitter, two for three, two singles, a run scored. The last third of the Mariner batting orders had a big night collectively. Ball one. See Buner, two for three with a home run and a walk. Then Valley, two for three with a, a run scored. The ninth place uh, man who started Vizcal got a walk and a run scored while he was in there. One and oh, the count. Looks like uh, we might have seen the last of Eric Hansen. Russ Swan, who'd been throwing in the Seattle bullpen, has put a jacket on and is now sitting in the Seattle dugout on the first base side. Been a long, tough night for Hansen. Broke his bat. He shattered it with that pitch. One and two the count. John, I want to take some time here. and uh, You know, in the, we talked about at the beginning of the show, 1975 and 76, when I was with the Reds, some of the greatest times of my life. And in playing there and winning world championships, the things that I remember we got to share with our families, the championships. And this past week, Johnny Bench's father, Mr. Ted Bench, passed away. And we shared a lot of good times there in Cincinnati with him. And my father wanted me to wish Johnny, say to Johnny and his family, condolences from the Morgan family and from ESPN to Johnny Bench and his family because if you see Johnny Bench, you, you know Ted Bench. They were very similar people, very strong will. So our condolences to Johnny and his family. And all of our prayers and best wishes, we'd like to add that. Johnny Bench and the Bench family. One and two the count to Valley. Strike three with a breaking ball. One man left. It'll be Bain Steinbach and McGuire when we reach Seattle Mariners. Left-hander Russ Swan, who hails from this part of the country, from the Bay Area. He was born in Fremont, California, although now he lives up uh, near Seattle. Russ Swan takes over for Eric Hansen as the left-handed hitting Harold Baines leads off for the Athletics. Six to six. Ball one. Now, after Baines, you've got two right-handed swingers, Steinbach and McGuire, and uh, the Mariners have some right-handed activity in their bullpen. Strike one to Baines. Baines really got the Oakland comeback rolling in the third inning with a two-run bases loaded double. Little tap. Swan got him. Baines has had numerous knee surgeries, just does not run well any longer. He does not run well and the ball was chopped to first base. Joe Brinkman called him out. Speaking of Joe Brinkman, he and Bruce Froming, two of the best umpires in the major leagues, have an umpire in school. Brinkman is the crew chief here for this group, but they have an umpire school, and they work together. It's called Brinkman Froming Umpire School. It's in Cocoa, Florida. Here's Steinbach. He is single. Safe in an error and fly to right. Swan. Ooh, that fastball right by him. Gene Harris up in the Seattle bullpen. Swan was born here in the Bay Area, but he actually went to school up in Washington, a town called Kennewick. It's a strike 0 2. 
Then he went to uh, Spokane Falls Community College and finally Texas A&M. The Mariners drafted him in 84, but he decided to go instead to Texas A&M. He finally had to uh, trade with the Giants to get it. Traded a pitcher by the name of Gary Eve for last year to acquire Russ Swan. Six to six, one out in the seventh. There's a foul down the right field line. And it will drop back in amongst the spectators, says the Seattle right fielder. Jay Buhner gave chase. One ball, two strikes. What a wild night. The Mariners were ahead 5-0 with Hanson on the mound. And Oakland got four in the third. Buhner homered in the sixth to make it 6-4, to four, but Oakland got two in the last of the sixth to finally come back all the way to tie the game. Now we are in the seventh. Martinez guards the line at third against the extra base hit. Swan is high and away with it. Two and two. That time of the game, Joe, pretty standard. To guard against the extra base hit. They're doing it at third base, although not at, uh, really at first base. Not with the, the overshift. You see Martinez there, right on the line. O'Brien maybe shaded that way a bit at first. He struck him out. Two down. Steinbach retired. Tuesday night. Tuesday night baseball. It will be the first game, 7.30. The Chicago White Sox so far unbeaten at Yankee Stadium facing Mattingly and the Yankees. The Yanks are really hitting the ball well so far. Because they've got a much better lineup this year than last, particularly with Mattingly, Mattingly appearing to be healthy. McGuire first ball swings. Schaefer, the shortstop, throws it in the dirt, but O'Brien is able to come up with it. And Oakland retired in order for the first time since yesterday. <laughs> Sunday Night Baseball, our first one of 1991. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan, and it is six to six. That pitching matchup, which we thought was going to be upon us tonight, it didn't turn out that way. Six to six, sort of a wild, raucous affair here. Jeff Schaefer leads off against Steve Chitron. And strike one. Chitron out of Stanford, and you got Jack McDowell pitching for the White Sox, Jeff Ballard pitching for the Orioles. Uh, Stanford's become quite a baseball power in that College World Series a couple of times. Too high, one ball, one strike. You were mentioning the fact that this was not a pitcher's duel. Well, both of their records remain the same. They're, they've never been defeated by the opposition. That's right. No decision. Hanson is still 3-0. and Dave Stewart still has 14 consecutive victories over the Seattle Mariners, but now it's 14 and 15 starts. Yeah. He was 14 and 14 starts. That's right. He had not had a no decision in those 14 starts. It's always a win. Two and two. He foul tipped it, did Schaefer. Harold Reynolds will follow, then Greg Briley. Six runs and eight hits with two errors for the Mariners. Six runs and six hits with one error for Oakland. Has helped out the athletics uh, quite a bit with a big lead in this game. Hanson walked six, the most he's ever walked in any game ever in the big leagues. They made two errors that led to two unearned runs, including the tying run. Hanson in six innings, six runs, four earned. Half swing. Blankenship's going to have to hurry just in time. One away. We go to the top of the order. Coming up right after the ball game, right here on ESPN Sports Center, the latest on the Masters, and I mean very late because it's all over. The NBA scores and highlights in a conversation with George Foreman, and then after that, baseball tonight with Chris Berman, Ray Knight, and Peter Gammons. I want to hear the conversation with George Foreman. <laughs> George is uh, being pretty cagey about yeah. this fight, isn't he? Yes, he is. Harold Reynolds, the hitter, he bluffs the bunt, takes ball one. Reynolds is one for four. He had a two-run, bases loaded, second inning double. Riles very shallow at third. Shortstop, Gallego up with it. Off the glove of McGuire, he went for the tag, but he lost the ball. So Reynolds is safe, right. and he is—he's safe, but he's hurting. That's a heads-up play by Reynolds to avoid the tag. 
When you move from second base to shortstop, watch, he comes sidearm. See, that's the throw from second base. From shortstop, you want to come over the top. McGuire just misses the ball, and he hits Reynolds on the top of the head. So the ball is out before. McGuire thinks he has the ball when he makes the tag, but he really doesn't have it in his glove. Error on the shortstop. Now, Reynolds at first base is a guy who's not likely to stay there very long. He's a uh, base dealer, the Mariners' best. He's the only American leaguer since what, 1912 to beat Ricky Henderson for the stolen base lead in the season. Or at least it seems like that. Here's Briley. Well, he had a career high in 87 to 60 stolen bases. That was the year that Ricky, while with the Yankees, had some hamstring problems. Bullpen activity for the Athletics now as Briley takes ball one. Briley has walked, hit a sacrifice fly, grounded out, and had an infield single. There is Dana Allison, another Oakland rookie. Well, they got four rookies in that pitching staff right now, two starting. We're looking at one of them on the mound right now, Steve Chitron. Oakland's probably the only team that could try to do it and get away with it. They got a win from a rookie yesterday. Kurt Dressendorfer, not even a full year out of college. He beat the Mariners in his first big league start. And Thursday, they brought up an, as an emergency at the last minute, Joe Sluzarski for the minor leagues, and he pitched a shutout against Minnesota. Ball two, Chitron struggling here in the eighth. Well, this will be an interesting question. To watch the A's answer here early in the season with all of these games, especially in this 10 day road trip coming up. 10 days, 10 games. I think it's easier for them to pitch here at the Coliseum than it will be on the road. I think that will be their biggest test. Good yeah. pitchers park here. Right. They have to go to the hostile ballparks like California, where the ball travels well, Minnesota, those types of places. You'll get a better reading on how well they will do for the Oakland A's the first couple of months. Well, right now, we'd ordinarily be seeing the likes of Honeycutt and Nelson experienced the old hand. There's a strike. Two and one the count. But instead, we saw a clink. Very good. One perfect inning. Now Chitron, and back at Chitron, you've got another rookie, Dana Allison. And Clink himself, just a second year man. But they have the big guy down there still. <laughs> they can get to Eckersley with a lead. That could be two. Blankenship to Gallego, one to first, two, a double play. And we won't get to see Edgar Martinez, who was waiting on deck. Wilson, Riles, and Gallego coming up, tied at six. Foul ball into the batter's box by Willie Wilson on the first pitch from Russ Swan. Strike one. Again, Tuesday night, 7.30, the first of the doubleheader. As the Yankees at Yankee Stadium face the Red Hot White Sox and uh, the M&M &M boys, Mattingly and Moss, and uh, you might have to add Mullins before the season's over. The M, M, and M <laughs> boys. Those guys can all hit, it looks like. There's a swinging strike two by Willie. Wilson is 0 for 3 with a run battered in. 6 to 6, last of the eighth. The Mariner bullpen is busy as the Athletics come to bat here in the eighth. That's not Madonna's date the Academy Awards. That's the hard-throwing Mike Jackson of the Mariners. Two and two the count. Two-two pitch. High and away, ball three. Speaking of the Academy Awards, I wanted to congratulate you publicly. This winter, down in the Beverly Hills, you were named the top sports analyst in all of cable television winning the coveted ace award congratulations thank you very much John three two pitch too high and Wilson coaches the walk the walk from Swan John I've never done this publicly but I want to congratulate you for winning the coveted play by play announcers ace award this past winter in Beverly Hills we did have a great time didn't we Especially since we won. Yeah. It was a lot better after we won, I thought. <laughs> what a great night that was, I thought, later.
Ernest Riles coming up. You see Renee Latchman there getting the sign from La Russa. You think anything's going to be up here? Well, I, I think La Russa will try something. I don't, he will either bunt Wilson over or he will send him. He will not wait to get three singles to score a run. Which brings up now in hindsight, Reynolds in the first half of right. this inning, they never did try and steal it. The bunt. He makes O'Brien field it. The only play is the first with Reynolds covering. A good bunt by Riles. And you see Dave Duncan on the phone to the Oakland bullpen there. Or maybe calling the ace committee to find out why they would give us the award. <laughs> I think he wants to tell Dennis Eckersley, you better start soft tossing. Here comes Lefebvre. He's got Jackson ready in the bullpen. And you've got uh, three right-handed hitters in a row coming up here. Gallego, Blankenship. In fact, four right-handers in a row coming up. Eckersley did work two innings yesterday. They'd like to give him the night off if they could, I would guess. I'm sure they would like to, but La Russa takes it a game at a time. And I, right here, if they score a run, you may see Dennis Eckersley. Exit Swan, enter Jackson. Runner at second, one out of the eighth. Game tied at six. How's it going to turn out? Conversation with George Foreman in which he speaks, taunts, and sings. <laughs> it appears. Mike Jackson on for the Mariners. Well, Mike Jackson's a hard thrower, good fastball slider. He's the guy that they think may have to be the closer until they can get Schuler back. Schuler back, I'm sorry. Base hit could mean the ball game here. And Dennis Eckersley, indeed, just as you predicted, Joe, has begun warming up in the Oakland bullpen. Well, he's just soft tossing now because he will not come in in a tie ball game. There's Eckersley. If the A's are able to score here, you will see him heat up in a hurry. Mike Gallego has singled, starting a four run rally back in the third. He has struck out and he has walked. One for two, hitting ninth in the order. Blankenship on deck. Ball two. We're in the last of the eighth inning in Oakland. The ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. The Athletics six, the Mariners six. It had been five nothing Mariners much earlier. And Oakland has Willie Wilson at second base with one out. Gallego the hitter. Both bullpens are going. Not foul right back toward us. And uh, out of play. Two and one now to Gallego. John Dennis Eckersley did pitch a couple of things yesterday. That's Rob Murphy in the Seattle bullpen. But since Eckersley threw a couple of things yesterday, he may just be down there trying to see if he can get loose and see how he feels. He is not throwing very hard yet. That's Eckersley on your left. Jackson is throwing very hard. You don't have a lot of time to make up your mind, and Gallego indeed did take a swipe at that. Two and two the count. When the guy's throwing hard, you have a split second in which to decide whether you're going after it or to take it. We clock Jackson at 89 miles per hour with that last one. That's foul on the right field line over at Rob Murphy's head in the Seattle bullpen. Well, in this spot, ordinarily, you might figure Oakland to use a, a hitter. They've always had a pretty good bench here, but right now, all that remains of the Oakland bench is the right-handed hitting Vance Law and the left-handed hitting Jamie Quirk. Weiss had to leave the game with a strained hamstring, and they were already rather short-handed out there going in. Ricky Henderson not available with a, a strained calf muscle. Mariners really bunching up towards center field in the outfield for Gallego, playing way off the foul lines in both left and right. 2-2 Two -two pitch. All three. Really, La Russa does not have much in the way of moves available to him. He's got a... The only lefty he's got is Jamie Quirk, and that's his he's only other catcher. catcher yeah. So you would not want to use him, especially in a tie ball game this late. Three and two the count. That's right to the shortstop, Schaefer. Wilson has to hold it second as Gallego is thrown out. Two away, blanket chip up. 
rather than Weiss, who had to leave after the sixth inning. We're guessing he strained the hamstring as he scored all the way from first on the Henderson double in the sixth. That's just a guess. Here's Blankenship. He got the start the other day. I think it was the same day that uh, Sluzarski got the emergency start. Was that the day? I think so. And Canseco was out and he played right field. Oh, Friday when Canseco got the migraine headache yeah. the next night. Yeah, he played right field. And he got a couple of hits and uh, drove in uh, some runs. Oh, and one. The breaking ball in there. Six to six, last of the eight. Now, when the Mariners come up in the ninth inning, they'll have the big hitters up. Edgar Martinez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Alvin Davis. The three, four, five hitters coming up. Wilson at second, ready to go in anything. Strike two. Oh, and two the count. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. I figure the way I, I read that, Joe, is what got me the ace. <laughs> I thought you were humorous as usual in your accepted speech. You said, how do you win an award when all you say is ball one? Ball two. <laughs> and I said, if you think it's tough to call it, it's tough to analyze ball one, <laughs> ball two. No question why you won, but it is a mystery, the other one. Oh, and two the count to Blankenship. Ball one. <laughs> Starting to come into focus now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eckersley and Allison continue to throw in the Oakland bullpen, and we'll see Eckersley if somehow Blankenship can get that man home. Willie Wilson. He's at second. Mike Jackson trying to prevent that. The one-two pitch to Blankenship. Here it comes. It's a high fly ball, shallow center. Ken Griffey Jr. all over this one. That's the inning. Still tied. Martinez, Griffey, and Davis coming up. Six to six. Oh, our first edition, and it's six to six into the ninth. The Athletics <laughs> coming from a five-run deficit. And then finally, still trailing by two in the last of the six. They tied it, and we're still tied. We go to the ninth. The Mariners' big hitters coming up. Edgar Martinez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Alvin Davis facing the rookie right-hander, Steve Chitron. Chitron has worked an inning and a third so far. Struck out one, walked one, and has not allowed a hit. Martinez has walked three times and been safe in an error. Ball one. Caused him to lurch his head back out of harm's way. It's pretty good on base percentage right there. His fastball is way up and in, but he really just moves away from it. Strike call there. One ball, one strike. Steve Chitron was born in Tokyo. His father at the time was stationed there while in the Army. Curve outside, two and one. Steve uh, himself lives in Las Vegas now. Tokyo and Vegas, similar. Out of neon. <laughs> That's a called strike. In the Shinjuku area of Tokyo, they got those big yeah. electronic Billboards. Two and two the count to Martinez. Way outside, ball three. The left-hander, the rookie, Dana Allison, stays up in the Oakland bullpen. Usually they get more innings in this from Dave Stewart, which is one of, I think, his underappreciated values for this club. That's ball four. Chetron is basically a breaking ball pitcher. And he tries to spot his fastball low and away or up and in. And he missed with it low and away. This is Ken Griffey. If you're going to pitch to him, you try to keep the fastballs on the inside part of the plate. Or you go up and away or here. You try to stay out of the middle because he really drives the ball well from those areas. He's really kind of similar to his father. I think his father, Ken, 
Senior was the best fastball hitter that I ever saw. He could hit a fastball. I don't care who threw it and where you threw it. He could handle it. Well, we'll get a chance here to see Ken Griffey Jr. now face, instead of that man, Steve Chitron, a left-hander, Dana Allison. Allison's on. He's going to take his warm-ups. We'll be back. Virginia, Dana Allison, 24 years of age. He made his Major League debut just the night before last, Friday, against these Mariners. And he comes on to face Ken Griffey Jr. Allison out of James Madison University. And it was just uh, not quite two years ago that he received his degree in political science from, from James Madison. Griffey won for four. He had a first inning single that drove in the Mariners' first run. Runner at first, nobody out. He's up there to bunt and takes ball one. Riles in hard from third. There's McGuire on the bag at first with the runner, Edgar Martinez, who has reached base five straight times tonight. Four times with walks. That'll help his on-base percentage. 800 for tonight. <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. never had a sacrifice bunt last year. We don't know if he was asked to try. We know he never succeeded. The outfield plays him straight away. Ken Griffey Jr. And he bunts at it and misses. I think there comes a time during the season when even the middle of your order should have to bunt. Sometimes a game is so important and you need the one run, you have to go after it by sacrificing. And I think the Mariners, because they're 0-5, they need something to happen. And it's a good idea here to try to advance the runner. And he gets the butt down. McGuire will go to first. That's Blankenship covering. Well, that's a good strategy by Jim Lefevre and good execution by Junior. He squares around this time. The first time he tried to beat it out, he squares around, bunts the ball perfectly down the first baseline. McGuire has to go to Blankenship, but he advances Martinez into scoring position. Now here's a guy, Alvin Davis, who is not too bad against left-handed pitching. He's done awfully well against him over the years. He takes ball one. His lifetime average against left-handers, 271. You see what it was last year, a little bit lower than that. Two or three years ago, he hit about 330 against left-handers. Because he doesn't swing at a lot of bad pitches. That is right to McGuire. Can they double up the runner? Yes, a double play. The side is retired. Martinez just could not get back. So just like that, the inning ends. And Joe, Edgar Martinez, is that a mistake? Well, the ball is hit behind him. So it's not really a mistake because you want to score. It's pretty good play by McGuire. He gets the ball, gets rid of it pretty quickly back to second base. Martinez is just barely out. You have to get a good jump off second base if you're the winning run or the go-ahead run. He wasn't that far off. It was pretty good play by both the shortstop and the first baseman. Don't forget now, right after the ball game, whenever that is, we're heading to the last of the ninth, tied up. Sports Center. All the day's highlights from the Masters, from the NBA, from the, the world of women's tennis, and of course from the major leagues. And after that, baseball tonight with Chris Berman, Ray Knight, and Peter Gammon. So stay with us. Sports Center next, the Emmy Award winning Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Bob Lee, and then Chris Berman and the, uh, the guys with baseball tonight on ESPN. Six to six, last of the ninth inning. By the way, just uh, for the record, we mentioned Edgar Martinez with four walks tonight. That ties the all-time Mariners record for most walks in a game. And Alvin Davis is one of those with whom he is tied. Davis has done it a couple of times. Danny Tartable did it once while with the Mariners. That's surprising. He's a swinger. And the uh, first guys ever to do it for the Mariners were Steve Braun. Remember him? Yeah. Real good pinch hitter later yeah, with the uh, Cardinals. And Dan Meyer, one of the original Mariners. So here we go to the last of the ninth inning. And Dave Henderson will start it off. Then Canseco, then Baines. So Mike Jackson will truly be put to the test here. The Mariners had the middle of their order up 
in the top of the ninth. Now the A's have the middle of their order up here in the bottom of the ninth. Dave Henderson. Last year, and it seems like most years, this former Mariner was at his very best in late innings of close games. Already in this game, Henderson in the clutch, sixth inning, his team trailing six to four with a man on, doubled into the right field corner, driving the run, and then scored on a wild throw, the tying run. Ball two. He is a good fastball here, and Mike Jackson has thrown him two breaking balls. Now he's behind 2-0. and oh. He will have to give him the fastball. Last year, when leading off in the late innings of a close game, Dave Henderson hit 556. 2-0. and 3-0. Oh. Oh. Now you got Canseco on deck. Jackson knows that. Well, he went after him with the fastball. This is Jim Lefevre. He's trying to decide how he's going to play this. If he does walk Henderson. Stride. Three and one. There's Canseco on deck. Cool, windy night in Oakland. Six to six. The Mariners have not won a game this year. In there. Three and two. This is a dangerous zone for Dave Henderson. The high fastball. He can put a charge in it. That's the kind that Reggie Jackson says that's fence high. All you have to do is hit it. <laughs> yeah, I feel very deep. Third baseman Martinez over protecting the foul line here against the extra base hit. Prime directive number one, if you're the defense here, don't let anybody get into scoring position. 3-2 pitch. And through base hit. Well, it might have made it through anyway, but the hole was a bit wider with Martinez over on the line. He hit it solidly, so it was going to go through the left side. It's a low fastball. Well, that's actually about bell tie. Henderson drives it into left field. He oh. does excel in clutch situations. There's Henderson tonight, three for four. And Lefevre on his way to the mound. He's got the left-hander, Rob Murphy, in the bullpen. I don't think he wants him to bat against Canseco, though. I, he wants to give him a little time maybe to warm up in case Canseco gets on. He could bring him in to pitch to Baines. Canseco up, Baines the lefty next. Now Canseco, yesterday, hit his first home run of the season. He had a very productive spring. The back is no longer giving him trouble. For those of you who were not aware of his injury, he has a slightly protruding disc in his lower back. And that's what was causing him all the problems last year. So Lefevre heads back to the dugout. Murphy heating up in the bullpen. Lefevre at this point, very little managing to be done right now. Very little. Just let Jose try and take care of it. On the bag at first with Dave Henderson is O'Brien. Nobody out. Foul. That is a dangerous pitch to throw Canseco. A slider in the middle of the plate. If you're going to go after Canseco, you need to throw him good fastballs inside, and sliders better be away and down. A slider in the middle of the plate is like a mediocre fastball. He will put a charge into it. Canseco now. Keep this in mind, has never had a hit against Mike Jackson. 0 for 8. One strike to count. Boom! Came right after him. That's, That's the hit. reason right there that he has not had many hits off of Jackson. Jackson usually comes after him with the fastball and the high fastball. He swings right under it. A mighty cut. The left-handed hitter on deck. The outfield very deep. Two strikes to count. Here it comes. One and two. That's a 
a good two strike pitch. The one thing Mike Jackson can't do is forget about Dave Henderson at first base because he can still a base and he will still a base if you forget about him over there. There he is short lead. Two and two to Kansas City. Twenty eight thousand nine hundred forty nine the paid crowd in Oakland tonight. Jackson threw a fastball by him and now he's missed with two breaking balls. They throw one fastball by him and they will not continue to throw it. They're just afraid of making a mistake with it. Breaking ball is hit high to shallow right center. Ken Griffey Jr. has got it. And now the fever can come after Baines with Murphy if he chooses. And again. The A's have very little with which to counter a move like that. This is a high slider. The kind that Ken Seiko usually hits a little better than that. But he gets under it and pops it up. He had a good cut at it. He was just underneath it. Here's Baines. Baines has struck out. He's hit a two-run double to start the comeback in the third. Line to left and hit one back to the pitcher. One out. Ball one. Interestingly, in his career, Baines against Murphy is one for six. But against, uh, rather, against Jackson, the man he's facing, one for six. Murphy, the left-hander, he's two for four against him. Very little, very little sampling there. Right. Has a feast. Not a lot of time to bat. He's faced either one of them very often. Ball two. One of the reasons Lefebvre wants to leave Jackson in here is because he needs a closer. If you go and take him out now, it may not be good for his confidence. He needs to build Jackson's confidence so he can be the guy coming out of the bullpen until they get Schooler back. 2 0. Baines fouls one off to the left into the second deck. 2 and 1. Now, also, if he gets Baines out here, then you've got two tough right handed hitters following Baines Steinbach and McGuire. As you said, he's not doing a lot of managing right now. <laughs> the fever is sitting there hoping that Jackson can get him through this inning. Six to six, last of the night. One out, one on. Two and two the count. This is a guy that Mike Jackson I'm talking about has been coveted by some teams over the years. Well he has a good live fastball and a pretty good slider. And a live arm. Can always get you through a lot of tough situations. Henderson back. Any chance La Russa might start him? I here? don't think he will start him with Baines at bat unless the count goes full. But if Baines makes an out and Steinbach is the hitter, you can look for Dave Henderson to try to get a good jump and go. And uh, it becomes a moot point now. Henderson is to second base. First base is open. Will they just walk Baines here? They got two strikes on him. Well, that's the key. You have two strikes on a guy. I don't believe in walking a guy with two strikes. I don't care who he is. You try to make a perfect pitch. If he goes for it, you're probably going to get him out. It's a fastball that runs away and off the glove of Valley. He could not catch up with it. They're signaling ball four, but I played in this ballpark one time, and Dick Williams in the World Series signaled ball four to Johnny Bench and then threw strike three over the outside corner. But they're walking Baines intentionally. No such chicanery this time. That was Raleigh Fingers got bent. Raleigh right? Fingers. I was on third base and I was yelling to John. I said, John, be ready, be ready. He told me later he heard me, but he just could not register in his mind that they were going to pitch to him. And besides, he said he threw a pitch low and away. He couldn't have done anything with it anyway. So Lefevre says, let's not even fool there around with Baines here. He walks him intentionally. And here is Steinbach. Now Steinbach has been one of Oakland's hottest hitters this first week. Well, he's been swinging the bat well. That's why he's hitting in front of McGuire. McGuire normally hits behind Baines. 
I still believe that he threw a couple of pitches by Baines, so he had a chance of getting him out. With two strikes, the hitter is a little defensive, and you can usually, you know, come after him and maybe make a good pitch. Ball one. On the other hand, he's got the percentage of the right-hander right. versus the right-hander and could get a double play to end the inning right Yes, here. you're right. If it wasn't two strikes, I would agree with you. But Tough, that's right. Tough call with two strikes right. already on the batter. With two strikes. There's Henderson, the possible winning run at second base. One out. That's a strike. It's one and one. Percentages are good over the course of a year, but in one at bat, one pitch, percentages do not come into play. Steinbach hitting 421 for the young season. Three RBIs. He's had an RBI tonight. He needs just one more to send the, the Oakland fans home happy. One and two the count. Right after the ball game, stay tuned for Sports Center. And you'll have all the day's sports news right there at your fingertips. It's right after the ball game. Incidentally, point of reference, as you see Jim Lefevre. It's Mike Paul next to him, pitching coach. And Tony La Russa, hoping his man gets the hit here. Against Mike Jackson, Terry Steinbach is two for four. With two runs battered in. So percentages say that you should have pitched to Baines. He was one for six. And you had two strikes on <laughs> Right, and you had two strikes. And Steinbach is two for four, but again, those are you know small numbers. If you've only been to bat against a guy six times, you can't get a real good gauge. Either way, if you've gotten two for four, it doesn't mean that you can hit him that well. It means you've been well successful at that point. But it usually takes, you know, I'd say about 20 at bats before you can really gauge what a hitter will do against a pitcher on a consistent basis. Steinbach uh, broke his uh, belt buckle, I guess. Swung that hard, huh? Yeah, he's borrowing one. <laughs> Somebody gave up their belt for the good of the team. <laughs> Give that man a belt. <laughs> Where have I heard that one before? Not usually on a baseball field. <laughs> a man needs a belt, let's face it. As will Jim Lefevre if this man gets a base hit here to end the game. Rick Burleson eyeing the new belt <laughs> procedure. Whoop. He didn't even have to swing. <laughs> One and two to Steinbach. There's Dave Henderson. He is the the important base runner here. Steinbach trying to bring him home. Base hit to the outfield should do it. The outfielders are all very deep. And Dave Henderson runs well. A ball and two strikes the count. And that pitch does not count. Time taken. It's a tough time to call time out when the pitcher starts his motion to the plate. The umpire is not obligated to grant time out. And particularly when the pitcher is already in the motion, he's not supposed to. But you can see Valley shaking his head there, telling him that he should not have done that. Jerry Steinbach trying to belt one. <laughs> out over the plate fouled it back only because Mike Jackson throws so hard is he able to get away with these hanging sliders he's hung one to Ken Seiko he just missed and he hung that one right there to Terry Steinbach but because he's throwing it real hard he's able to get away with it but a hanging slider in the middle of the plate usually gets hit very hard gets belted there's Rob Murphy looking in from the bullpen six to six last of the ninth one out, two men on. The one-two pitch to Terry Steinbach. And it's off the equipment that's not supposed to be a catch. It's not a strikeout, is it? Well, he's calling him out. The home plate umpire has called him out. But he's going to get a little help, I think, from some of the other umpires, because here comes Tony La Russa. And, uh, well, the point is, if it hits the glove first, then it's in play. If it hit the glove first, and that's what he's going to get a little help. He's going to talk to Joe Brinkman, the crew chief, to see if the ball hits the glove first and then bounces off of the, the chest protector, then he's out. 
It has to hit the glove first, and that's what they're telling him. They told Larusa the ball hit the glove first. Let's see. I think it did hit the tip of the glove, and then he cradles it. This, maybe from this angle. Well, I can't tell from there, but it's very close. If it did hit the glove first, it's the catch. And that's what they're saying. So that is a strikeout. Two men gone, and here's McGuire. McGuire in a... Well, they just threw somebody out of the ball game. I guess that's La Russa running down. Joe Brinkman he just gave somebody the heave home. Yes, I don't think it would have been La Russa because he didn't seem to be that upset. Well, if it's Steinbach, the A's are going to be in trouble if this yes. game goes to extra innings. I think LaRusso is saying, how could you hear what he said all the way over there? I'm pretty sure it wasn't LaRusso because he didn't seem that upset when he walked off the field. He was convinced that Brinkman was, they had made the right call, the correct call. Well, there's Steinbach. Well, if it's Steinbach, yeah, you're they, right. They were to have two players on the bench. <laughs> One of them, the other catcher, Jamie Quirk. But I think Steinbach, whatever he said, Joe, maybe we'll have a look at it here. Well, the Roos is on his way back. Steinbach. Roger Clemens they got thrown out because they could read lips. Maybe they could read Steinbach's lips. Well, here is Mark McGuire. 0 for 2 with two walks. Two on, two out. That's a base hit in the left center field. Here comes Henderson. Here comes the throw. Ball game's over, and Oakland has won it. Seven to six. And McGuire in the throes of an early season slump is the hero. The Athletics, well, they're the three-time defending champions of the American League, but Joe, they're not jaded. They're no. celebrating out there. They are celebrating. They celebrated when they tied the score in the sixth inning. He tries to throw a high fastball to McGuire, and he doesn't get it up enough. And McGuire lines it to left field. And Dave Henderson, who runs well, beats the throw from Briley. It's a pretty good throw. No need to hit the cutoff, man. He throws it all the way. But Dave Henderson scores the winning run. And Oakland sweeps this series. And again, Dave Henderson does everything with a flair. And, and they smiling. head to the road now for a 10-game road trip. Five and one. A very successful homestand to start it. And the Mariners, they're heading home. Still win.